Hello everyone, I'm Robin and welcome to Beginner 2. Now Beginner 2 is a little more difficult than Beginner 1, but that's okay because my videos are very useful, very helpful, they are real English, okay? So be sure to study them all. Now I'm going to give you a few tips or advice on how to study my videos. The first thing I want to tell you to do is to repeat repeat after me. Everything I say, you should try to follow me and say it the same speed and same style as I do. So for example, if I say, how are you? You should repeat, how are you? If I say, what do you do? You should repeat, what do you do? Now repeating is very important to improving your English. Also, most videos have example sentences, or example dialogues okay these are also very important I'm going to teach you a lot of vocabulary and new expressions and the example sentences and example dialogues will help you understand how to use them in a sentence they'll also help you with the grammar okay so be sure to focus and study the example sentences example dialogues some videos will have a test a listening test okay be very serious these are important tests okay so you should have paper and a pen and when the test starts you should listen carefully and write down the answer now if the test is going too fast stop the video okay slow it down to your speed but the test is very important to helping your listening all right now in the videos I cannot teach you everything I did my best to teach you uh, a lot of information, but it's not everything, okay? You're still going to have a lot of questions, and you might be confused sometimes, okay? So you have to do a lot of self-study. After you watch the video, don't just rush to the next video. You should do a little review, okay, and self-study. Self-study is very important. I can't do everything for you. You can't learn English just by me. You also have to self-study and practice it. All right, and the last thing I want to say is don't give up, okay? Now, these videos can be a little difficult, but don't give up. If you don't understand the video, watch it again, but don't give up. Keep going. The only way to improve is if you keep going, all right? And I know, I'm sure, after you watch my videos or you watch them twice, your English will get better. These are This is real English with real expressions, okay? That's it, and I hope you uh, do well. Good luck. Hello, everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about basic greetings for when you meet someone you don't know. Okay, someone you don't know is called a stranger. So when you meet the stranger, what do you say? Okay, so these are basic greetings. So on the board here, I have the first basic greeting. Hi. Okay, this is a very casual greeting you, when you meet someone for the first time. Hi. Very simple. The second one, hello. Oh, something wrong with the spelling here. Be careful with the spelling of hello. Many of my students put the W. There is never a W. It is only hello. Okay, be careful with that. So, of course, these are the most common greetings. Hi, hello. And here are three more greetings. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. All right, so these are the most basic greetings when you meet the stranger. And when you say hi, they will probably say the same thing. Hi. If you say hello, they will say the same thing. Hello. If you say good morning, they will say the same thing. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. So if they say good evening to you, you should answer good evening. If they say good morning to you, you should answer good morning. All right. That's how we uh, do our basic greetings with a stranger. All right, let's move on to some more greetings. 
Okay, so we're going to look at two more greetings. The next one is, how are you? And this one, how are you doing? Okay, both are very common. You must know that. How are you? How are you doing? How are you? How are you doing? So if someone asks you these questions, and you would answer starting with I'm. Okay, I am. I'm. I'm fine. Okay, so I'm fine is the best answer. It's the most common answer. So you should always try to say, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. There are other answers. How are you? I'm great. I'm good. I'm not bad. I'm so-so. Okay, but be careful with so-so. Many of my students uh, say so-so too much. Okay, so the best answer is I'm fine and sometimes use these. Okay, maybe you are not fine, so you want to express uh, something bad. So, how are you? I'm bad. Or, how are you? I'm not good. How are you doing? I'm not good. All right, so someone asks the question, you answer, and the polite thing to do is ask them the same question. So, how are you? I'm fine. And then we should use one of these. Okay, how are you? I'm fine. And you? Okay, you're asking them. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? Okay, these mean the same thing. So you could use this one or this one. All right, let's take a look at a few examples, uh, example dialogues, so we can understand this better. All right, let's look at example dialogue one. Good morning. Good morning. Let's look at example dialogue two. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Let's look at example dialogue three. How are you doing? Not bad. What about you? I'm pretty good. Let's look at example dialogue four. Good afternoon. How are you? Very well, thank you. And you? I'm fine. Okay, I hope you have a good understanding of how to use basic greetings to someone you don't know. It's easy, all right? Before we go, I want to talk about this expression. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Of course, every Korean knows this expression. This is what you were taught in school. But of course, this is too common and too nice, too polite. So it's a little bit funny, okay? So, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. Uh, try not to use this, okay? Let's make it easier. Uh, as I said, it's too nice. So let's cut the thank you, okay? So this sounds better already. This is much better. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Okay, that's better than I'm fine, thank you, and you. All right? So that's basic greetings. Uh, again, I hope you understand, and I'll see you next video. Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about basic greetings you would use with people you know, with your friends, okay? Now, let's take a look. I have three here. Now, we would use these in very casual situations, okay? We don't want to use these in business meetings or meeting some stranger who is very important. We want to use this with uh, people we know, very friendly people. All right, so the first one is what's up okay so what's up you what's up okay don't look up what's up common greeting what's up and what's new very similar so if someone asks you what's up that's they're kind of asking you what are you doing now okay so it could be hey what's up and you would answer oh i'm going out for dinner okay so what's up what are you doing Hey, what's up? 
uh, I'm about to go to a party, okay? With what's new, what's new, uh, maybe they haven't seen you for like a week, okay? You haven't met your friend for one week. You meet your friend and your friend says, hey, what's new, okay? What's new? What's new in your life? Okay, what happened in one week? So someone asks you, what's new? And you would answer, well, I made a new girlfriend. Or I went to a concert last Friday. Okay, so what's new with you? Uh, I, I took a trip to Busan over the weekend. Okay, so someone asks, what's new? Kind of what happened in your life since they last saw you? All right. And the last one, very friendly expression here. How's it going? How's it going? What is it? How's it going? Well, it is your life. How's your life going? Or similar to how are you? So how's your life going? Are you doing well? Uh, you would answer, you know, if someone asks, how's it going? You would answer, it's going great. It's going well. It's going fine. Okay, how's it going? It's going wonderful. All right, so these are the first three. Let's take a look at another three. All right, so here are three more uh, expressions you can use when you're meeting your friend. Uh, the first one, very nice, very polite, very friendly. You say, good to see you. Okay, good to see you. Or Good to see you again. Okay, so you haven't seen your friend. You see your friend. Hi, good to see you. Okay, that's very friendly. Let's look at the next one. You meet your friend and your friend asks you, how are things? How are things? Okay, what, what things? How are things? Now, things, uh, those are things in your life. So, What's happening in your life? How's your life? Okay, how are things? So the how are things, you would answer, things are great. Things are good. Things are fine. Okay, how are things? Things are wonderful or things are bad. Okay, so you can express that with things. How are things? Things are so-so. And the last one here. How's life? Hey, how's life? Uh, how's life? Again, very friendly, asking about your life. Is your life good or is your life bad? How's life? You could say, life is good. Life is great or life is terrible. Okay, not good. Okay, it depends on your feeling. So these are three more to use with your friend. Again, uh, not in a business situation only with uh, friendly people you know. All right, so let's take a look at some examples to understand these better. All right, so the first example, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. The next example, hey, what's up? Nothing much, how's it going? Fine. And the next example, how are things with you? Things are great. And you? I'm pretty good. The next example. How's it going? I'm okay. How about you? I'm pretty good these days. And the last example. How's life? Life's pretty good. How about you? Me too. Things are great. How are you? Did you understand my example dialogues? I hope so. These are good expressions to use speaking in English to your friend. All right, you should know them and you should practice them. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you next time. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the basic ways to say goodbye. All right. Now, on the board are the three most common ways to say goodbye. You probably already know them. The first one, goodbye. Uh, usually, we write this with a hyphen, okay? Goodbye. Now, a lot of my students are scared to say goodbye 
because they think uh, goodbye is goodbye forever, okay? I'll never meet you again, uh, or I'm, I'll meet you in a very, very long time. That's not true, okay? Goodbye is very common, and you can meet your friend at the end of the evening, say goodbye, and that doesn't mean goodbye forever, okay? So don't be scared to say goodbye. The next one, of course, we shorten it, make it short, to bye, just bye. Very simple, very easy, very common. Bye. All right, and of course, in Korea, they like to say bye-bye. Okay, a lot of my students always say bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. They say it too much, all right? You should say bye-bye sometimes, not every time. Okay, so try to say bye and goodbye. All right, so these, are, these three are the most common. Let's move on to see you. Okay, let's look at the see you expressions. Now, see you is a very useful and excellent way to say goodbye. Now, of course, you can just say a very simple see you. Okay, that means bye. You could also say see you soon okay see you soon we're gonna meet soon maybe later today or tomorrow anyway the time is short soon okay see you soon see you later see you later okay now this one is special see you later and many people are confused because see you later what is later now later today uh, tomorrow, when is later? See you later. All right. Well, sometimes people say, see you later. That means later today. Sometimes they say, see you later. That doesn't mean later today. It means just goodbye, just bye. Okay. So this one could be confusing. So when someone says, see you later, probably you're not going to meet later okay it's probably just bye all right the last one here see you you could put any time here see you tonight see you tomorrow see you on the weekend see you on friday see you next week okay very useful to tell the person goodbye and when you will see them next all right Let's move on to a few more examples of how to say goodbye. Okay, let's look at three more here. This one, cheers. Okay, a lot of students are confused because cheers has two meanings. The first meaning, of course, when you're drinking beer and you want to celebrate with your friends, you hit the glasses, you say cheers. Okay, but this meaning is different than that cheers. This meaning is just bye, okay? So cheers, that just means bye. Especially in emails, people write their email at the bottom, cheers, okay? Bye. The next one, take care. Take care is a very sweet and friendly way to say goodbye. You just say take care, okay? Very nice way to say goodbye. I like it, take care. And the last one, good night, okay? Good night. You can only use that at night. Don't use it in the day, only at night and usually late night, okay? So maybe you're at work very late, 10 p.m., everyone is going home, good night, okay? Again, just means bye. All right, so these are a few more expressions, of course, there's many, many more expressions. This is just a few. Anyway, let's take a look at a few example dialogues to help you understand how to use these. All right, the first example dialogue. Goodbye. Okay, see you next time. Example dialogue two. Take care, Jack. Okay, you too, Jill. Bye. Example dialogue three. See you later. Cheers. And example dialogue four. 
Have a good night. Okay, good night. I hope you understand the examples. Before we go, I want to talk about these words. Now, these words are not English, okay? These are other languages, but all these words mean the same thing. Goodbye, okay? So, in English, sometimes we borrow words from other languages and we use them to say goodbye, all right? Now, I'm going to say these words, but I'm going to say them with English pronunciation, okay? So, it's probably not the right pronunciation, but it's how we say it in English. The first word is Italian, and we're going we're to pronounce that as ciao, okay? So, ciao. So, sometimes we say ciao, and that just means bye. The next one, Japanese. So, with English pronunciation, we say sayonara, okay? Again, bye. This is Spanish. Adios, adios, adios. Again, bye. And the last one is French. Au revoir, au revoir just means bye. Okay, so again, sometimes we say these in English to our friends. All right, so that's how we say goodbye in English. I hope you understand. That's, that's it. There's nothing left to say except goodbye. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about expressions you use when you haven't seen someone for a long time, okay? So imagine you're walking on the street and then you see your friend and you haven't seen your friend for a long time. Maybe you haven't seen your friend for a month or six months or a year, or five years, or you haven't seen them for ten years, okay? You haven't seen them for a long time. So, what should you say? Well, first, you should say hi or hello, but then you should use one of these expressions, okay? So, the first one, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So, you could say, hey, Susan, how are you doing? It's been a long time, okay? So, you want to express that you haven't seen them for a long time. It's been a long time. The next one, it's been too long. Hey, Jack, how's it going? It's been too long, okay? We haven't seen each other for a long time. So, it's been too long. If you see, I have the blue line. We can change this to other time, time expressions. So you could say, it's been too long. You could say, it's been uh, one year. It's been one year. It's been ten years. It's been ages. Hey, Stan, how are you doing? It's been ages since we last saw each other. So, ages, a long time, okay? And the last one here, of course, this is the most common one and the easiest one to use. Long time no see. So, hey Jack, how are you? Long time no see. All right. So, again, all of these mean I haven't seen you in a long time. Good to use when you meet your friend you haven't seen in a long time. All right. Let's move on to a few more expressions. Okay. Here are two questions to use when you haven't seen someone for a long time. The first one, how long has it been? Okay, so you haven't met your friend for a long time, so you say, Hey Dave, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a long time. And he says, How long has it been? Okay, so you have to think, How long have we not seen each other? So you could say, It's been two months. Okay, so we haven't seen each other for two months. So how long has it been since we last met, okay? It's been, and you have to think, hmm, about one year, okay? The next question, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? Now, the up to is same as what have you been doing, okay? Since we last met, what have you been doing, okay? 
So maybe you didn't meet your friend for one year. Okay, so you want to ask, you know, how long has it been? It's been one year. What have you been up to? What have you been doing for one year? Okay, well, I've been uh, traveling. I've been working hard. I've been studying English. Okay, so you want to tell what have you been doing for that time? All right. So these are two useful questions to use when you haven't met your friend for a long time. Let's take a look at some example dialogues. Okay, example dialogue one. Hi Susan, it's been a long time. Hi Dave, yes, it's been over two years. Example two. Hello Mr. Smith, how long has it been? About six months. I'm happy to see you again. Yes, me too. Example dialogue three. Jessica, long time no see. Hi Jeff, what have you been up to? Well, I got married and moved to France. Wow, good for you. I'm so happy to see you again. Example four. Hey Paul, it's been ages since we last met. Yes, wow, maybe ten years. It's been too long. I missed you. Okay, I hope those dialogues helped you. I know these expressions are a little bit difficult. They're a little bit big. They're a little bit complicated. But these are excellent expressions to use when you haven't seen someone for a long time. Okay, when you haven't seen your friend for a long time. And also in the business situation, you haven't seen someone for a long time. All right. You should use these. Well, I hope you can uh, learn them and know them. Maybe it takes a little, little bit more self-study. Anyway, you can do it. I'll see you next time. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about your first meeting with a stranger. Okay, a stranger is someone you don't know. So here's a picture of two people. They are strangers. They don't know each other. Okay, so this is their first meeting. And we have five things we should do in the first meeting. Do or say. Uh, the first thing. What's the first thing we should say at the first meeting? Okay, you meet someone. What's the first thing you say? Well, should of course be hi or hello. Hi or hello. And what's the second thing you should say? Nice to meet you? No. Okay. Don't use nice to meet you second. Before nice to meet you, you should always ask about their name. Okay. You should ask them their name first. So, hi, my name is Robin. What's your name? All right. So, after the name, now you can say, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. So it's very important to have nice to meet you after the name. Okay. Meeting someone means you know them. Okay. You know their name. So if you put nice to meet you before the name, it's very strange. And many Koreans do this. They say, hi, nice to meet you. We didn't meet yet. Okay, so you have to give the name. Hi, I'm Robin. Nice to meet you. All right. What's the next thing? So this is the greeting. Okay. Hi, name. Nice to meet you. And the next thing, this is going to be questions. So you're going to start asking questions to get to know them. For example, uh, where do you live? Where are you from? What do you do? Okay, you have to start asking questions to know them better. And then once you talk a little while, the last step, of course, is bye. Goodbye. See you later. All right. So you should follow these steps when you meet someone, a stranger, for the first time. Hello. Ask them their name. Nice to meet you. Ask some questions and then bye. Okay, that's the process of meeting a stranger for the first time. 
All right, let's take a look at an example dialogue. Okay, let's look at this dialogue. Two people are talking for the first time. Hi, hello, my name's Robin. What's your name? My name's Jack. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What do you do? I'm a student. And you? I'm a teacher. Well, I have to go. See you again. Yes, bye. Okay, I hope you understand uh, what to say when you meet someone for the first time. All right, you should follow those five steps. Say hello, ask about the name, then nice to meet you. Remember, don't say nice to meet you so fast. Like many of my students, it sounds very strange. So after nice to meet you, then you can start asking some questions. And of course, the ending is always bye. All right, that's it for this video. Bye. Hello, in this video we are going to talk about four essential questions you should know when you first meet someone. Okay, now I call them essential questions because essential means very important. You must know, okay. Now, probably you already know uh, most of them, but let's just review them anyways. Let's take a look at the first one. Uh, you think it's very easy, but maybe you're using it wrong. The first question, what is your name? What is your name? Now, probably when you were young, your English teacher taught you what is your name, and that's fine, but you're not a child anymore. You are a an adult, okay, you've grown up, so you shouldn't say, what is your name anymore, okay? This sounds childish. What is your name, okay? An adult, we are going to use a contraction. What's, okay, what is, we're gonna change it to what's, what's your name, all right? This is more common, what's your name? It's faster, what's your name? What's your name? Okay, I wrote my name here. My name is Robin. Again, this is a little bit childish. What's your name? My name is Robin. My name is, again, we don't want to use this style anymore. Let's make a contraction, make it faster. What's your name? My name's Robin. My name's, my name's Robin. What's your name? My name's Robin. All right, this is adult style. Also, for what's your name, you could just say, I'm Robin. This is okay too. So, my name's Robin, I'm Robin, doesn't matter. Both are okay. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, the next question, very common, very easy. Where are you from? Where are you from? Okay, so say it very fast. Where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? I from Korea. Oh, this is terrible. So many of my students say I from Korea. Don't, don't say I from Korea. Let's put a line from that. That is bad grammar. I from Korea. No, the correct is I'm. I'm from Korea. I have to hear this M sound. I'm from Korea, all right? Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Korea. Well, I'm not from Korea. I'm from Canada, okay? So make sure you can say this question very fast. Where are you from? And make sure you use I'm. I'm from Korea. Let's go to the next question. Where do you live? That's our next question. Where do you live? Don't say where are you live, okay? That is wrong. The question is, where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? Okay, so where do you live? Live is asking, where's your house, your home? Where do you live? So your answer should have your city or area. So where do you live? First answer here, I live Seoul. I live Seoul. This is wrong. Okay, bad grammar. Where do you live? I live so No. Where do you live? I live in. 
in so you need the preposition in always you always need in so where do you live I live in Seoul okay uh, the last one here is a short way where do you live okay you don't have to say I live you could just start with in the preposition in so where do you live in Seoul okay so again where do you live I live in Seoul in Seoul never say this all right let's move on to the last question what do you do what do you do okay this is asking about job what do you do every day for work okay what do you do now English speakers don't say what do you do we say it very fast we say what do you do what do you do what do you do okay very difficult to hear what do you this is what do you what do you do what do you do okay so I ask my students what do you do and a lot of my students say I'm student I'm student this is wrong okay this is bad grammar don't use I'm student I'm student what do you do I'm student don't use that that's terrible grammar you should use this and take a look I'm ah okay don't forget this ah I'm a it sounds like one word I'm a I'm a what do you do I'm a student I'm a student I'm a student okay what do you do I'm a student the next one on remember these words start with vowels vowels a e i o u and words that start with vowels we should use on okay so what do you do I'm an engineer I'm an office worker okay all right so that's the last question what do you do so let's review the questions the first question what's your name my name is Robin second question where are you from I'm from Canada third question where do you live I live in Anya and the last question what do you do I'm a teacher all right so I hope you understand how to say the questions also how to answer the questions these are very important questions you should know them that's it see you next video hello again in this video we are going to look at some questions to ask someone to know about their family okay now remember asking about family is a very personal thing so make sure you are very familiar or friendly with the person before you start asking about family now here are the first two questions and these are good questions to start with they're both do you questions the first one do you live alone okay only one person in the house do you live alone this is a really good question to ask someone do you live alone because when they answer if they answer yes oh then you know they're single but if they answer no they will probably tell you no I live with my parents or no I live with my husband or wife okay so you could learn a lot by asking this question about who he lives with or what kind of family he has the second question do you live with your parents okay similar style do you live with your parents and the person will tell you yes or no now both of these are do you questions and all do you questions the easiest way to answer is yes I do no I don't okay very easy answers do you live alone yes I do no I don't do you live with your parents yes I do no I don't all right so these are good quick answers but these are boring answers okay so these answers are very easy but probably if you say yes I do or no I don't you should also give more information 
Do you live alone? Uh, no, I don't. I live with my parents. Do you live with your parents? Yes, I do. We live in Chamshu. Okay, so these are good ways to answer quickly, but you should try and give more information. All right, let's move on to the next questions. Okay, so the next question is very common and very important. This is the question you want to ask to know about their brothers and sisters. And here is the question. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Okay. Again, it's a do you question. So the simple answer is yes, I do. No, I don't. But that's not enough information. Okay. So here is the best answer. Do you have any brothers or sisters? So, yes, I have one brother, one sister, two brothers, two sisters. Okay, because it's two, remember we need that S. Two brothers, two sisters. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have two sisters. Or you could say, I have one brother and two sisters, or I have one brother and three sisters. Okay, but remember the single and the plural. All right, so this is the best way to answer. Yes, I have one brother. Some people, uh, no, okay, you are single, you have no brothers or sisters. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, I'm an only child. No, I'm an only child. I'm an only child. Okay, so this is what you would say in English to say you have no brothers or sisters. Okay, let's move on to the next questions. Are you single? Are you married? These are our next two questions. Very important questions to ask someone. All right. So it's very important to know if they're single or married. So again, are you single? Is that person alone? Only one? Are you married? Do you have a husband or a wife? Okay. Now they are are you questions. So all are you questions. We have to answer yes I am. No I'm not. Okay. Now some people uh, say, yes, I'm. This is wrong. You can't use a contraction here. It has to be, I am. Never say, yes, I'm. That is wrong. It is only, yes, I am. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Okay, so let's practice uh, fast, speaking fast. Are you single? Yes, I am. Are you married? No, I'm not. Are you single? No, I'm not. Are you married? Yes, I am. Okay, so those are these two questions. Let's move on to the last question. Okay, we're at the last question. Do you have any children? Do you have any children? Now, probably the first question is, are you married? Yes, I am. Then you would ask, do you have any children? Do you have any children? Now, this is similar style to do you have any brothers or sisters? Okay, do you have any brothers or sisters? Do you have any children? Same style answer. Yes, I have one son. Yes, I have one daughter. Yes, I have two sons. Yes, I have two daughters. So remember one son, two sons. Don't forget the S. Two sons, two daughters. Of course, you could also say, yes, I have one daughter and one son, or I have three daughters and two sons. Okay, you can say many things. Uh, some people have no children. So, do you have any children? No, I don't have any yet. Okay, I don't have any yet. Do you have any children? No, I don't have any yet. All right, so this is the question you want to ask about children. All right, so we learned a lot of questions to ask people about their family. Remember, these are kind of personal questions, so make sure it's okay 
make sure you're friendly first. All right, so you should practice these questions. These questions are common and very useful. That's it. See you next video. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about personal questions. Okay, now you have to be very careful asking someone personal questions. Okay, if you ask them too soon, okay, maybe you don't know each other very well yet, and you ask the questions too soon, they might be a little bit upset or angry. So you, you got to be careful asking these questions. Make sure you're friendly. Now the first one I'm going to start with, how old are you? Okay, as we know in Korea, it's very important to know about age. So when you meet someone for the first time, uh, you want to know their age, how old they are. But again, this is kind of a personal question, so it shouldn't be one of the first questions, okay? You should talk a little bit with the person, and then when you feel the time is right, or it's okay, then ask this question, okay? Don't ask this question too soon. Anyway, let's take a look at the question. How old are you? How old are you? How old are you? And some of my students say, my old is 22. My old is 22. Of course, this is bad grammar. You cannot say my old is 22. That's wrong. I'm 22 years old. Okay, this is a full sentence. How old are you? I'm 22 years old. Uh, probably your teacher taught you this way, but this is uh, kind of childish. How old are you? I'm 22 years old. Okay. As an adult, uh, we, we're probably going to say it a little bit quicker. We're going to say this. How old are you? I'm 22. Okay. So this is the best way, the easiest way, and the most common way. Okay. How old are you? I'm 22. Use this. This is okay, but this is better. And certainly never use this. All right, let's move on to the next question. Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Okay, it depends who you're talking to. Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Okay, you want to know. This is a do you question. Do you? So the answer is very easy. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Do you have a boyfriend? Yes, I do. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Do you have a boyfriend? No, I don't. Do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. All right. Be sure to use a. Ah. Don't say, do you have boyfriend? Okay. This is very important. Do you have a boyfriend? All right. Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? All right. Again, a little bit personal question. Don't ask it too soon. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is a fun question to ask someone. What's your blood type? What's your blood? This is pronounced blood. That's your P, blood. What's your blood type? Okay, very easy to answer. What's your blood type? It's A. It's B. It's AB. It's O. What's your blood type? All right. What do you think my blood type is? Well, my blood type is not B, not A, not O. It's AB. Yes, that's my blood type. So I understand AB means genius or psycho. Uh, hmm, which one am I? Well, anyway, it's a fun question to ask someone, but make sure you know that person well. Let's move on to the last question. Here's the last question I want to talk about in this video. Well, first look at this question. What's your hobby? Okay, that's, a, that's an okay question. What's your hobby? But in my opinion, this question is stupid. Okay, so I'm going to say, that's a stupid question to ask. Don't ask that question. What's your hobby? Instead, 
This is a better question, okay? And this is more common. What do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? Okay, so that's better than asking what's your hobby. That's kind of old style. This is more common, better. What do you do? What do you do in your free time, all right? Very easy to answer. I like to, and then you would put a verb, okay? I like to play computer games. I like to shop. I like to exercise. I like to go meet my friends. I like to chat on the internet. I like to drink soju. Okay, very easy to answer. What do you do in your free time? Hey, what do you do in your free time? I like to study English. All right, so we learned a few uh, personal questions in this video. They're good questions to ask, to get to know someone, and some of them are very fun. But again, they're personal questions, so uh, be careful when asking the questions because the person maybe doesn't want to answer these questions. All right, so that's it. See you next video. Hello students, in this video we are going to talk about do you and are you questions. Now do you and are you questions are very useful. You should know them because once you know how to ask questions with do you and are you, you can ask many many questions very quickly. Let's look at do you questions first. And I have two styles here. The first style, do you like? Okay, very simple. Do you like? So you would put anything here. Do you like Korea? Do you like kimchi? Do you like soju? Do you like ice cream? Do you like handsome guys? Do you like sexy girls? Okay, you can ask so many questions with do you like? The next style. Do you like too? Okay. Now they're the same, but we're adding to. Do you like to? Okay, this is, means we're going to have some sort of verb, some sort of action word. So, for example, do you like to ski? Do you like to exercise? Do you like to play computer games? Do you like to drink? Okay, there's many things you could put here. Uh, action. Something, they're doing something. Do you like to swim? Do you like to ride a bicycle? All right, so that's do you like? Do you like to? Very useful for asking questions very quickly. All right, now if someone asks you these questions, the do you questions, with do you questions, very easy answer. Okay, do you like pizza? Look down here. You could say Yes, I do, or no, I don't. Do you like pizza? Yes, I do. No, I don't. All right, very easy to answer. Okay, so very easy to ask, very easy to answer. You should know how to ask do you questions. Let's move on to the are you questions. Okay, here are the are you questions. The are you questions are very easy to use and very useful also, okay? Let's take a look. So, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you tired? Okay, these two are asking about the condition of the person. Are you hungry? Are you tired? Are you having fun? Okay, you want to know uh, how they are feeling, their condition, their body condition. The next two, are you happy? Are you angry? All right, you're asking about their emotion, their feeling. Are you happy? Are you angry? Are you scared? All right, you want to know their emotional feeling. So the are you question is very good to know how the person's condition and how they are feeling. All right, if someone asks you are you question, this is your, how you answer. So are you hungry? Yes, I am. Are you tired? No, I'm not. Okay, don't confuse the do you 
and are you questions. Okay, sometimes uh, my students confuse them. The do you questions, yes I do, no I don't. The are you questions, yes I am, no I'm not. Okay, you got to be very careful, don't confuse them. Okay, so that's the are you questions. Uh, so the do you and the are you questions, very useful to know them right away because you can ask a lot of questions in English to a native speaker. So many questions, okay? So learn them and practice them. That's it for this video. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to introduce your friends. So you have to introduce one friend to another friend. And it's very easy. Let's take a look. Here is me, Robin, and I have two friends. Mike's a good friend, and Sally is also my friend. They are my friends. But Mike and Sally, they don't know each other, okay? They are strangers. So I have to introduce them. So I would probably say, Mike, let me introduce my friend. Mike, this is Sally. Sally, this is Mike. Okay, one more time. Mike, this is Sally. Sally, this is Mike. Okay, I introduce them. So once I introduce them, probably they're going to start talking to each other. They'll probably say, nice to meet you, nice to meet you too, and maybe ask some questions. Okay, that's it for introducing a friend. Let's take a look at a dialogue so we understand it better. All right, the first dialogue. Hello, June. Let me introduce my friend. Steve, this is June. June, this is Steve. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. The second dialogue. Hey, Jack. Hi, Robin. Who's this? Oh, let me introduce my friend. Jack, this is Jessica. Jessica, this is Jack. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I hope you understand the dialogue. Uh, it's very easy to introduce your friend and I hope one day I can introduce you to my friends and you can introduce me to your friends. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you next video. Hello everyone, my name is Robin and welcome to the first video in the numbers series. All right, now we're going to talk about English numbers today and if you already know about English numbers, that's okay because this video is an excellent review. Uh, if you don't know about English numbers, it's time to learn. All right, so let's take a look. The first one here, zero. And if you notice next to zero, it has another name, O. Now, a lot of native speakers say zero, but more native speakers will just say O, okay? So this is very confusing to Korean students because when I say zero, when I say it as O, uh, many of my students hear O and they don't think of this number, they think of this number, five because in Korean, O means five, okay? So you gotta be very careful. In English, O means zero, okay? Let's move on to the next numbers. They're a little bit easier. Uh, listen to my pronunciation of each number. Okay, so the first one, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and don't forget zero and O, okay? 
Let's move on to the next set of numbers. Okay, let's continue on with our numbers. I have the next set here, 11 until 20. All right, so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, as you can see, I put the red line here on these ones because these are the teens, okay? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, all right? So you gotta be very careful with the teens because look at this, 20. Teen and T sound very similar, so it can be confusing. So this has to be teen and T. So 19 and 20. Okay, there's one more problem I wanna talk about. That is 12 and 20. A lot of my students confuse the numbers 12 and 20. Be very careful. This is 12, 12, and this is 20. Don't confuse those numbers, please. All right, let's go through the pronunciation one more time. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, let's move on to some bigger numbers. Okay, so let's continue with the numbers from 20 to 100. We've already studied 20. Well, what comes after 20? 21. And we can see how I spell it. 20, and we have to put this. This is a hyphen. 1. 21. And after 21, 22. Again with the hyphen. And after 22, 23. 24. 25. 26. 27, 28, 29, 30. And then it continues again, 31, 32, 33, all the way to 40. And then 41, 42, it continues this until 100, okay? So let's just focus on the tens right now. Now the first two, we already know, we know 10 and 20. Now let's take a look at these. So of course, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Okay, this is 100, but it can also be pronounced a hundred. Okay, both are okay. Uh, I want to talk about 40 again. Now, the spelling of 40, uh, a lot of my students see the 4. So when they spell 40, they spell it F-O-U-R-T-Y. This is wrong, okay? You have to spell it F-O-R-T-Y. That's 40, all right? So that's the numbers from 20 to 100. Let's do some extra pronunciation practice right now. All right, I know you need extra practice with these numbers, okay? These numbers are difficult and confusing because they sound very similar. And a lot of my students have problems uh, pronouncing these numbers correctly, and it makes me confused sometimes. All right, and I have one story. Uh, a few years ago, I made an appointment, or actually a date, with a girl. And we were supposed to meet uh, at 5.50. That's what she told me. Let's meet at 5.50. So I went to the meeting place at 5.50, but she wasn't there. Okay, so I waited and waited. She never came. And then the next time I saw her, I said to her, you know, why didn't you show up? I was waiting at 5.50, and she said, yeah, I was waiting there too, but you never came, and I was very confused. Well, it turns out that she said 5.15,
but it sounded to me like 550, okay? So we were both confused of the time. Well, she was there at 515, I was there at 550, and we never met, okay? So it's very important to get the, the numbers right and don't confuse them. So let's review. Of course, these are the teens. So this is 13 and this is 30. 13, 30. 14, 40. 15, 50. 16, 60. 17, 70. 18, 80. 19, 90. Okay? Make sure you get those right and pronounce them correctly so you don't have confusion like me. All right. Uh, before we go, we are going to do a, a listening test with numbers. So you should get a pen and some paper and listen carefully. I'm going to say the number. You should write down the number. Good luck. All right. So for this test, you should have some paper or something just to write down what you hear. So I'm going to say a number and you should think of that number or write that number down. All right, let's start. Number one, the first number is seven. Seven. Okay, that's easy. You should have this. Number two, 13. 13. Okay, so it's 13. Number three, 75. 75. Okay, so that's a big number, 75. Number four, 20. 20. Okay, you should write this 20. And number five, 19. 19. Okay, looks like this. And number six, 66. 66. Okay, so this is 66. Number seven, 33. 33. Okay, you should write 33. Number eight, 90. 90. Okay, so this is 90. Number nine, 12. 12. Okay, so you should write 12. And the last one, listen carefully, 21. 21. All right, so you should write 21. I hope you did well on the listening test, okay? So these are the basic numbers from 1 to 100. You have to know how to say these numbers. You should know how to write these numbers. And I hope this video helps you, but of course this video is not enough. You have to do self-study and practice these numbers a lot to make sure you know them well. All right, well anyway, that's it for this video. See you next time. Okay, hello everyone. We already practiced the numbers 1 to 100. All right, those are the basic numbers. We're getting into some more difficult numbers, bigger numbers. Uh, don't be scared. I will try to explain it as simple as possible. Uh, please listen carefully and good luck. Here we go. So I wrote the numbers here and let's start with the first three. We already know the first three, 1, 10, 100, okay? So that's the easy part. Now it's going to get a little more confusing. So I will try to make it simple. Let's look at the next number here. Uh, this is 1,000, okay? So we have three zeros, three zeros, that is 1,000. And every three zeros, we usually use a comma, so 1, comma, three numbers, three zeros, one 
thousand. So three zeros is a thousand. Let's move on to the next number. We have the three zeros again. Thousand. We know that's a thousand. What's this number? Ten. Ten thousand. One thousand. Ten thousand. Let's move to the next. Okay. We know this is a thousand. One hundred thousand. Okay. So one thousand. Ten thousand. One hundred thousand. Let's move on to a really big number. Now the three zeros here I underlined with blue because that's a thousand. But if you look here, these are red because they're not a thousand anymore. We have three zeros and three zeros. This is now a million. So if you see six zeros, that's a million. So we have one million. Okay. Let's move down. Ten million. All right. So don't be confused. Let's go through this again. One, ten, one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand, one hundred thousand, one million, and ten million. Okay. I know it's difficult. It takes a lot of practice. So let's go do some practice right now. Okay, so I have seven numbers here for us to practice how to say them. So let's take a look. The first one, very easy. We have the two zeros here. This is simply 500. Okay, let's move to number two. Now number two, we can see we have the three zeros here. And I told you that means thousand. So this is 7,000. Okay. Number three. Again, we have three zeros here. 15,000. 7,000, 15,000. Let's look at the next one. Three zeros. We know this is 1,000. This is 25,000. All right. Let's go to a bigger number. Lots of zeros here. Okay, so we know this is a thousand and we have more zeros here, but it's not three zeros. So this is just a thousand and this is 200. Okay, 200,000. Let's go to a bigger number. Now we have three zeros, three zeros. So this is no longer a thousand. This is now million. 7 million. Okay, let's go to a bigger number. Three zeros, three zeros, 18 million. Okay, so one more time. 500, 7,000, 15,000, 25,000, 200,000, 7 million, 18 million. Do you understand? I hope so. Uh, let's try a test right now. All right, so for the test, you should have a, maybe a pen and a paper that will help you. There's 10 questions. Okay, so I'm going to say a number. You have to uh, think of that number and write down that number. So number one, 15,000. 15,000. Okay, so you should have written 15,000. All right, number two, 800. 800. Okay, so you should write 800. Number three, 75,000. 75,000. Okay, so it looks like this, 75,000. Number four, Six million. Six million. Okay, so you should write it like this with six zeros. And number five, six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. Okay, so six hundred thousand looks like this. Number six, three thousand. 3,000. 
Okay, so this is 3,000. Number seven, 19,000. 19,000. Okay, so this is 19,000. Number eight, 66,000. 66,000. Okay, it looks like this. Number nine, 500,000. 500,000. Okay, it looks like this. And the last one, number 10, 25 million. 25 million. All right, that's a big number. It looks like this. Whew, I know that was a difficult test. Uh, I hope you did well. Uh, I know big numbers are very difficult to say and understand. It takes a lot of practice. Now, I hope this video helps you, but again, you need a lot of self-study to truly master these numbers. All right, see you next video. This video is very, very difficult. This is advanced numbers, okay? It's very difficult to understand. It's very difficult to express these numbers. We're going to talk about very big numbers and how to say them, all right? Uh, try not to be scared. I will try to teach you as simple as possible. But again, uh, this, is, this video is meant to help you you have to do a lot of self-study to truly master these numbers. Okay, let's start with the hundreds here. Now, we already know this number. You should be able to say this number by now, 100. But let's look at the next. Okay, now this is 101. Now, listen to what I said, 101. Do you hear the and? Okay. Now, that's actually British style. When British people say numbers, they use an and. So, 101. But American style is different. They don't say and. Okay, so 101. American style is 101. No and. Okay, so British style again, 101. American style, 101. Now, which style should you use? Doesn't matter. Both are okay. Everyone will understand you if you use British style or American style. British style doesn't sound strange. American style doesn't sound strange. I come from Canada, so uh, sometimes I use British style, sometimes I use American style. So keep that in mind. Uh, probably when you're listening to me, sometimes I use the and, sometimes I don't. Okay, so 101 or 101. Let's look at the next number, okay? 150 or 150, okay? So we know this is 50, 150. Let's look at the next, uh, next number. That's 1, that's 51, 100. 51 or 151. All right, let's look at the next number. We know this is 2. We know this is 92. This is 792 or 792. All right, and the last number here, well, we know that's 9. That's 99. That's 999 or 900. And 99. All right, so these are the hundreds. Let's move to bigger numbers, the thousands. Are you ready for some bigger numbers? I'm sorry, but it's going to start to get really difficult. Okay, so let's take a look here. Listen carefully. Our next number, we know this is 1,000. So this is 1,001. Okay, 1001. Uh, if you want to use British style, 1001. 
Okay, again, doesn't matter. So 1001, let's move up. So we know this is 100 and we know this is 1100, 1100. Okay, now let's move to the third number here. A little more confusing, we got lots of numbers. Okay, don't be so scared. We know that's four, we know that's 24, we know that's 324, and then we got the thousand. So 7,324, 7,324. Let's move on to the next number. 555, 555, 10,555. Okay, let's move on. 424, 324, 17,324. Let's move on. Bigger number here. 6, 66, 666, 152,666. Okay, let's review these numbers again. 1,001, 1,100, 7,324, 10,555, 17,324, 152,666. Okay, you ready for some more? Let's go to some even bigger numbers. You're still watching this video? Uh, that's too bad because I have something very scary to show you. All right, so here are some very, very big numbers and let's try to say them. Uh, the first one, all right, we have three and three. So we know this is million. So this is going to be six million eight. Okay, very simple. That's an eight, six million eight. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so if we take, we also know this is million, but if we just start here, how much is that? Well, that's 500,000. So how much is that? Well, that's 5,500,000. All right, let's get to a very big and confusing number, even confusing to me, but let's try it together. Uh, again, we have three and three. We know this is million. We know this is 13 million, uh, but we have to say all these numbers. Okay, so let's, let's start slow. That's two, 32, 432. Well, that's a zero, but that's, well, we're going into, oh, it's getting very confusing now. This would be 20,432. 620,432, 13,620,432, big number. Let's move on. I'm scared myself. All right, again, we have three and three. I know this is million. I know this is a 24 million. What are all these numbers? Two, 32, 432, 8,432, 48,432, 548,432, and our final number, 24 million. 548,432. 24,548,432. The last one here, a really, really big number. Okay. So again, 747, 947, 2,947. 
32,947. 432,947. And what's this? Well, again, this is three, three, this is a million. So this is 125 million. 432,947. 125 million 432,947. Okay, do you understand all these numbers? If you do, that's great. Uh, but before we do a test, we're going to do a little extra practice. Okay, so let's just review a little bit. Uh, I have five numbers here just for a quick review before the test. Okay, so the first one, how much is this? Well, we have 444, 444. And again, we can use the and, 444. That's possible. Uh, the next number, okay, we know three zeros or three numbers here. This is 1,000. So 8,942, the next number, okay, lots of numbers, uh, we know it's 1,000, 55,543, bigger number, lots of sevens, but don't be scared of all these sevens, so again it's just 1,000, so 277,000, 700, 77, 277,777. All right, and let's go to the millions. Three, three, I know this is a million because it has two commas. So 3,320,330. All right, so if you can understand how to say these five, you're ready for the test. So we're going to start the test. Uh, you should prepare some paper and a pen. Uh, I'm going to say the numbers and you should write down the numbers. All right. So let's start the test. Good luck. Number one. 666. 666. All right. So you should write this. 666. Number two. 3,212. 3,212. Okay, so you should write this. The next number, number three. 6,432. 6,400. 32. All right, so you should write this. Number four, getting bigger. 12,814. 12,814. All right, so it looks like this. Number five. 22,432, 22,432, okay, looks like this, number six, 79,521, 79,521. All right, looks like this. Number seven, 432,987. 432,987. Okay, looks like this. Number eight. Two million three hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred eighty two. Two million three hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred eighty two. Two million three hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred eighty two. Two million three hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred eighty two. Two million three hundred and forty three thousand nine hundred eighty two. Two million three
343,982. Oh, very big number. Okay, it looks like this. Number nine. 54 million. 543,987. 54 million. 543,987. Okay, so that looks like this. Number 10, the last one. Okay, the last one is very difficult. Sorry. Okay. Listen carefully. 11,111,111. 11 okay, so that looks like this. Oh, this was a very difficult video. Oh. Well, that's English numbers. Those are the advanced numbers. Uh, I hope you did well on the test. I know it was a very difficult test. And it takes a long, long time to master the numbers you saw today. All right. It takes a lot of self-study, a lot of practice. But never give up. Uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Well, that's it for this video. See you next time. Hello everyone. This is an advanced numbers video. I'm going to teach how to express some advanced numbers. Let's take a look. All right. We know this is expressed 900. And let's go to the next one. Now, I taught you before, this is expressed 1,000, okay? Now, 1,000 is the best way to express it, but it is possible to express it 1,000, okay? Next one, 1,100, that's the best way, but some people will say 1,100, 1,200, 1300, 1400, 2000, 2100, 9900. Okay, this is only 10,100. Okay, this can be 9900, but when you're getting into bigger, bigger numbers, you, you have to stop saying hundred and change to thousands. Okay. So you can say 100 between these numbers, all right? So from 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way up to 10, 100, 20, 100, uh, up until 9,900, 99. So you can see this number is already past that number. So the 100 stop, all right? This is a little bit confusing, I know. Let's do a, a little bit of practice. Okay, so I wrote a few more examples to help you understand how to express these numbers using 100, all right? So again, this is our range. We can only say 100 in these, with these numbers. So the first one, the best way is 1,700, but you can express it 1,700. Next one, 1,701 or 1,701, 7,500, 7,521, 9,212, and the last one. Okay, the last one is outside. Okay, it's continuing. It's too big. We have to use 1,000, so this has to be 11,100, okay? You can't say 111. 100. Okay, it has to be 11,100. All right, I hope this helps you understand a little better how to express in hundreds. But as your teacher, I prefer if you say 1,700. 
uh, to use it that way. But I have to teach you the other way because somebody might say to you 1700, so you should be able to understand. All right, so that's it. See you next video. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about ordinal numbers. Now, ordinal numbers are different than cardinal numbers. Of course, cardinal numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ordinal numbers are different. Ordinal numbers are used for uh, expressing things like rank, first, second, third place uh, in a contest or they're used to express anniversaries. For example, this is my third wedding anniversary. And it's also used commonly in the calendar for dates. For example, June 1st, uh, June 2nd, okay? So this is where we use ordinal numbers. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to write ordinal numbers and also pronounce them correctly, okay? So we're going to look at the first 10. I have the first 10 here. So let's go through them very quickly. This is first. And if you notice, the last two letters I underline in blue. Okay, the last two letters are very important. So if you see first, the last two letters are ST. So when we want to write an ordinal number, we have number one, we must use the last two letters. So the last two letters are ST, so this is our ordinal number. We should write ST, okay? So this first, and now we write it like this, first. And the ST is usually up, okay? Let's move on to second. Second, we see that is ND. So the last two letters of second, ND, two, we have to put ND, all right? So now this is second. First, second, third. The last two letters, RD. So we have to go over here, RD, third. Fourth, TH. TH. Fifth. Five and again. TH. Sixth. TH. Seventh. TH. Eighth. TH. Ninth. TH. Tenth. TH. Okay, so you can see most of them use the TH. Just the first, second, third, SD, ND, RD. You have to be very careful. All right, look at these numbers over here. I wrote some numbers circled in red. 3 and TH. 3 and TH. 3th, 3th. Okay, this is a common mistake. This is obviously wrong because 3 only has RD. You have to use these two letters. This is impossible, okay? So 3 impossible. Next one, 6, six second, second, again, that is impossible because 6th, 6th must have TH. So this is impossible. And the last one, ninth, ninth, well, ninth, ninth must have TH, so these are impossible. So you have to be very careful writing these numbers. They must use the last two letters. Okay, let's worry about pronunciation right now. Pronunciation can be a little bit difficult also. So let's go through the list and you should watch me and listen carefully. So, first, second, third, fourth. Okay, when I say fourth, look at my tongue. My tongue comes out. Fourth, fifth, 
sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Okay, so the th, your tongue should be coming out. Let's do the th again. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Okay. So these are the first 10. You should know these. Let's move on to some bigger numbers. All right, let's continue with our ordinal numbers. The next after 10th is 11th. We see the TH and the TH goes there 11th. And the next one 12th TH. And the next one, I did not write the next ones here, but I will say them. So listen carefully. So 11th. 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. All right, let's look at 20th, okay? So it's 20. 20 has a Y, but you can see they take out the Y. They put in an I-E-T-H. This is 20th. And we would write it with the th, 20 with the th, 20th. All right, so with the pronunciation, 20, 20th, 20th, 20th. After 20th, 21st, okay, 21st. And we would write 21 with the st. This is 21st. And again, I did not write the next ones here, but listen carefully. So 20th. 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th. And again, like 20th, 30th, no Y, just I-E-T-H. 30th, 30th, 30th. All right? And I also want to talk about the pronunciation of 12th. 12th is very difficult to pronounce. If you look at it here, you see that F. And many students try to pronounce it with the F. 12th. Okay, that's very difficult. But what is actually more common, even with native speakers, is we don't pronounce the F. We just skip it. So, for example, if we cut that F, imagine it is not there. 12th. Okay, that's a little bit easier. You can just say 12th. 12th. Okay. So again, 12th, 20th. Okay. Be sure to pronounce those correctly. Let's move on to some bigger numbers. Okay. So I am sorry because I cannot write every ordinal number, okay? I cannot explain every number. So you're going to have to practice guessing what is the ordinal number. And I put some numbers here and we're going to guess whether they use ST, ND, RD, or TH, okay? We only have four choices. The first number is 56. So if we want to change that to an ordinal number, we have to choose one of these, okay? So 56. Well, we know 6 is t 6 is th 6th and it's going to be the same. 56th. So we're going to write a th there. Let's move on to the next number. 91. Well, what's the ordinal number? 91th? No. This is going to be like 21st and 31st. This is going to be 91st. All right, the next one is 100. So we have to choose one of these. 100st, 100, 100, 100th. Okay, it's going to be the TH. 100th, 100th. All right, and the next number, 101, 101. Well, this is like 91st. This is first again. First. So it's going to be 
one hundred and first. One hundred first. All right. And the last one, one thousand. We have to choose. Well, one hundredth, one thousandth. Okay, it's going to be the same. All right. So again, I'm sorry I can't teach every number. You're going to have to learn how to guess correctly. Uh, we're going to do a quick test right now. So what I want you to do in the test is just write down or think about what the correct ordinal number is. Again, just write in the ordinal number. Number one, it is September 20th. It is September 20th. All right, so you should have written 20th. Number two, Seoul National University is ranked first. Seoul National University is ranked first. All right, so you should have written first. Number three, we live in the 21st century. We live in the 21st century. Okay, so you should write 21st. Number four. I was born on March 17th. I was born on March 17th. Okay, you should write 17th. And number five. We are celebrating our 12th wedding anniversary. We are celebrating our 12th wedding anniversary. Okay, so you should have written 12th. Okay, I hope you did well on that little test. Okay, now ordinal numbers are important. Again, they're used for ranking and they're used for the calendar and also anniversaries. Also, sometimes you see book volumes uh, use ordinal numbers. Okay, so you should know ordinal numbers. Now, it takes a lot of practice and self-study to truly, truly master ordinal numbers. I hope this video helped you understand them a little bit better. And, well, that's it. See you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about fractions, okay? Now fractions are a little bit difficult to express in English, so I hope this video will help you understand how to express them in English, okay? So I wrote a few uh, fractions here, of course, this is not all the possible fractions, this is just a few to help you understand how to express fractions. Okay, so these are fractions, and it doesn't matter, the line is this way or this way. All right, so I'm going to go through the first one here, and this is probably the most common fraction. Okay, so we express this as one half or a half. Okay, so as I said, it's a very common half. The next one is a one third one third all right do you remember the ordinal numbers we studied in the previous video the ordinal numbers are first second third well you have to use those here so this is one three no one third so a half one third and the next one is also very common it's a very common fraction one fourth no, it has a special name. If you see this, this is one quarter or a quarter, okay? So a half, one third, a quarter. The next line. Now, we have one third and you see two third. Well, one is single, it's only one, but two is plural. So, we don't say two-third, we have to say two-thirds, okay? We have to add an S 
at the end. So one third, two thirds. All right, and let's go on to the next one. So two fifths, two fifths. All right, the next line, I'm starting with three and oh, we have the four. So this is uh, one quarter, this is three quarters, okay? This has an S, this has no S because it's singular. One quarter, three quarters, okay? What's this? Three sevenths, okay? They're very difficult to pronounce, I know. It takes a lot of practice. Three sevenths. All right, the last line, what's this? Five sixths, okay? This is very difficult to pronounce, five sixths. And the last one, okay, sometimes fractions are expressed with a whole number. So we would say two and nine tenths, okay? Two and nine tenths. Tenths. So you would have to put an and in there. All right. So uh, I hope this helps you understand how to express fractions. Uh, let's do a little bit uh, more practice with our listening. All right. So here's a couple of example sentences. Uh, the first one four fifths of Canadians speak English. Four fifths of Canadians speak English. All right, let's look at number two. One third of Korean men smoke. One third of Korean men smoke. All right, number three. I went to a quarter of my English classes. I went to a quarter of my English classes. And the last example. My shoe size is ten and a half. My shoe size is ten and a half. All right, so that's fractions. I know uh, it's a little confusing and difficult, but I'm sure with some self-study and practice, you'll know it very well, okay? See you next video. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about speed, okay? Now there's two ways to express speed. There's uh, the metric system. Now the metric system, that's what we use in Korea and what I use in Canada. But there's also the imperial system. The imperial system you might see in uh, the USA or in even England, okay? But first, let's look at the metric system. All right, so I'm just going to focus on KMH. And KMH, of course, is kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. Notice I emphasize the S, okay? You always have to express the S. Kilometers. Kilometers. Kilometers per hour, all right? So I just have two examples here because it's quite easy. What is this speed? Well, six kilometers per hour. Okay, there is no S here, but you, again, you always have to say the S. Six kilometers per hour. And the next speed, 125 kilometers per hour. Okay, let's say it a little faster six kilometers per hour 125 kilometers per hour okay can you hear the s six kilometers per hour okay it's very difficult but it's there six kilometers per hour six kilometers per hour 125 kilometers per hour all right so i've been using the pronunciation of kilometers but some people might say kilometers Okay, so both uh, pronunciations are acceptable, kilometers and kilometers, but more common is kilometers, okay? So let's look at a few example sentences. 
All right, I have three examples here. The first one, the speed limit is 100 kilometers per hour. The speed limit is 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, the second example, the KTX travels 300 kilometers per hour. The KTX travels 300 kilometers per hour. And the last example, the average walking speed is five kilometers per hour. The average walking speed is five kilometers per hour. Okay, let's talk about the imperial system. Again, the imperial system is commonly used in America and you might see it in England too. They're going to use MPH. Now, MPH, of course, miles per hour. Again, we have to say miles per hour. Miles per hour. And one mile per hour is equal to about 1.6 kilometers per hour. Okay. So again, this is the imperial system, this is the metric system. A little bit different, okay? So let's practice uh, expressing these two. The first one, 10 miles per hour. I'll say it a little faster, 10 miles per hour. 10 miles per hour. Okay, again, there's the S, 10 miles per hour. And the next one, 201 miles per hour. 201 miles per hour. Be sure to have that S. Okay, that's one of the most common mistakes uh, my students make. They say mile per hour, 10 mile per hour. Okay, you have to have that S. 10 miles per hour, 201 miles per hour. All right, let's look at a few examples using miles per hour. The first one, the car was going 100 miles per hour. The car was going 100 miles per hour. Okay, the second example. The airplane travels 600 miles per hour. The airplane travels 600 miles per hour. And the last example. The speed of sound is 761 miles per hour. The speed of sound is 761 miles per hour. All right, so we learned the metric system using kilometers per hour, and we learned the imperial system using miles per hour. So again, uh, depends where you are in the world. Uh, some countries, actually most countries use the metric system these days, but probably, uh, certainly if you're in the USA, they're still using the imperial system. All right, so that's it. I hope you learned uh, how to express speed and uh, see you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about height, okay, and how to express it in English. Now there are two systems uh, to express height. The first system is the metric system metric system used in Korea, also Canada, where I'm from. And the other system is the imperial system, the imperial system used in, especially in America. But sometimes we also use it in Canada. So it's good, you should know the metric system, of course, but you should know a little bit of the imperial system in case you need to use it. All right. Now, first, we're going to talk about the metric system. So take a look. And I have two questions here. So let's just look at the first one. First one is asking, how tall are you? How tall are you? Okay. So I put my height. So I'm 183 centimeters tall. So listen again. I'm 183 centimeters tall. I'm 183 centimeters tall. Centimeters tall. Okay, there's no S here, but when you're reading this, you're reading or you're saying your height, you have to use the, 
plural, centimeters. Centimeters. Okay? I'm 183 centimeters tall. Don't say, don't say, I'm 183 centimeter tall. 183 centimeters tall. Okay? Got it? You understand? All right, let's look at the next question. Okay, both questions are asking the same thing about height. What's your height? What's your height? Well, my height is, again, 183 centimeters. Centimeters, remember the S, 183 centimeters. So that's one way to express it. But I also have an example using meters. So my height is 1.83 meters. So if you're using centimeters or meters, both of them need the S. Okay? So one more time, I'll say it really fast. How tall are you? How tall are you? I'm 183 centimeters tall. I'm 183 centimeters tall. What's your height? What's your height? My height is 183 centimeters. My height is 1.83 meters. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples. All right, let's start with the first example. He is 175 centimeters tall. He is 175 centimeters tall. The next example, the 63-floor building is 249 meters high. Okay, we use tall for people, but for buildings, we would probably use high. So, the 63-floor building is 249 meters high. The last example, the height of Mount Everest is 8,848 meters. The height of Mount Everest is 8,848 meters. All right, let's look at the imperial system now. The imperial system is a little more confusing, uh, so you should uh, listen carefully. I have the same question. How tall are you? But the answer is expressed very differently. So how tall are you? I'm, this is six feet tall. I'm six feet tall. All right, so in the metric system, I'm 183 centimeters tall. Well, in the imperial system, I would express that I'm six feet tall. So let's take a look uh, at the imperial system. They use inches and feet, okay? So one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters and one foot is equal to 30.48 centimeters. All right, so look at this, one foot. They say one foot, two foot, no, one foot, two feet, three feet. I am six feet, okay? So the singular is foot for one, but the plural is feet, all right. So they're gonna show their height like this. And how do we read this? Well, this is five feet. The first number is feet. Five feet, they're gonna put this seven inches. Okay, so this person is five feet, seven inches. Now, if you look at mine, I'm six feet, zero inches, zero inches, okay? But this is the inch place, so five feet, seven inches, and they write it like this, okay? Let's look at a few more examples of the imperial system. All right, so here's the first example. The Empire State Building rises to 1,250 feet. The Empire State Building rises to 1,250 feet. 
The next example, my mom is five feet two inches tall. My mom is five feet two inches tall. The last example, the basketball player is seven feet two inches tall. The basketball player is seven feet two inches tall. All right, so now we know how to express uh, height in the metric system and the imperial system, okay? Again, uh, probably in Korea, we're just gonna use the metric system, but if you're talking to an American, they might only understand the imperial system, okay? So you should know how to express your height in both ways. So again, uh, I'm 183 centimeters tall, or my height is 183 centimeters, but I could also express that I'm uh, six feet tall. All right, that's height and see you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about a very sensitive topic, weight or how much you weigh, all right? Again, there's two systems. There's the metric system using kilograms and there's the imperial system that they will use in the USA using pounds. But first, let's look at the metric system using kilograms. Okay, so there's two questions again, the most common questions to ask someone about their weight. So let's look at the first question. The first question, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? Now notice I don't put weight, okay? Weigh is a verb and weight is a noun. This question we have to use weigh. How much do you weigh? And your answer, I weigh 75 kilograms, okay? That's my weight. I weigh 75 kilograms. Now listen, I say 75 kilograms, kilograms. Don't forget the S at the end, kilograms. I weigh 75 kilograms. Let's look at this answer. I weight 75 kilograms. Okay, you see this X? That means it's wrong, okay? Never say I weight, this is wrong. It's I weigh, I weigh. I weigh 75 kilograms. Okay, so this is wrong. Do not say this. Let's move on to the next question. What's your weight? Okay, now it's using the noun form. What's your weight? My weight is 75 kilograms. Okay, again, my weigh, my weigh is 75 kilograms, X again, don't use that. What's your weight? My weight is 75 kilograms, don't use this. Okay, it's a little bit confusing, especially the weigh and the weight. It takes a lot of practice. Okay, I'm gonna say these again really fast, so listen carefully. How much do you weigh? I weigh 75 kilograms. How much do you weigh? I weigh 75 kilograms. What's your weight? My weight is 75 kilograms. What's your weight? My weight is 75 kilograms. Okay, let's look at a few example sentences. All right, the first example sentence, I gained 15 kilograms over the summer. I gained 15 kilograms over the summer. The next one, I'm fat. I weigh 100 kilograms. I'm fat. I weigh 100 kilograms. And the last one, I need to lose 40 kilograms. I need to lose 40 kilograms. Okay, let's talk about the imperial system now. So remember the metric system uses kilograms and grams. 
the imperial system, it's going to use uh, ounces and pounds. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's my question again. How much do you weigh? And before I, I said I weigh 75 kilograms. Well, in the imperial system, I weigh 165 pounds. This means pounds. Okay, so let's take a look at the two systems. So again, we use in the metric grams, they're going to use ounce. So one ounce is about, about 28 grams. Okay, and one pound is about 0.45 kilograms. Okay, so these are not exact numbers, it's just around. Okay. Now, how to write one pound? This is one pound, okay? This is not a one, this is actually an L, LB, LB, one LB. That means one pound. Now, pound starts with P. So, why do they write LB? Well, LB is actually from old English. Old Latin. It comes from a Latin term, Libra uh, Pondo. Libra Pondo. But we don't don't worry about the Latin term. That's very old. But still, these days we use LB. That just means pound. So one pound. Two. Okay, this is single one. Now we got two pounds. We usually write the S. LBS. One pound. Two. Pounds. For the ounces, one O Z. Okay, one O Z. One ounce. One ounce. Two ounce. O Z. It's always O Z. Sometimes you're gonna see one F L O Z. Now the F L means fluid. Fluid is like a liquid, like water. Fluid, ounce. And you're always going to see this on stuff like uh, perfume or cologne. Uh, if you check your perfume or, or cologne at home, I'm sure you're going to see this. Uh, you're not going to see the one. It's going to be a bigger number, but you're going to see the F-L-O-Z. All right. So that's the imperial system. It's an older system. It's a little more complicated and confusing. All right. But my weight in the imperial system is 165 pounds. Let's take a look at a few more examples of how to express weight in the imperial system. All right. The first example, a baby weighs nine pounds at birth. A baby weighs nine pounds at birth. The next example. The fattest cat in the world weighs 40 pounds. The fattest cat in the world weighs 40 pounds. The last example. His weight is 100 pounds. His weight is 100 pounds. How much do you weigh? Okay, that's a very serious and private question. Okay, so if you don't want to answer that question, maybe you should say no comment. But anyway, we learned how to express weight in the metric system. I weigh 75 kilograms. And the imperial system. I weigh 165 pounds. Uh, of course, the metric system is easier than the imperial system uh, to know and study, but you should be familiar with both systems. All right, so that's it, and I'll see you next video. Oh, it's sure hot in this studio, and it sounds like a good time to talk about temperature. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to talk about how to express temperature in English. Now you should know there's two systems. 
There's the American system, they use Fahrenheit. And of course, there's the system we use in Korea and I use in Canada, Celsius. Okay, we're going to talk about the Fahrenheit system later, but first, let's focus on Celsius. So look at the board and I'm going to start with this question. What's the temperature? What's the temperature outside? You should begin your answer with its. Okay, what's the temperature? It's. And I have many ways to express the temperature. Let's start up here. So what's the temperature? It's. This symbol means plus. Okay, plus. This means it is above zero degrees. Okay, it's warm. It's plus 20 degrees. Okay, this symbol always means degrees. Celsius. 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 Okay, it's very difficult to say. Celsius. Celsius is spelled with a capital C, a big C. Be careful here. Many people write a C. This is an S. Okay, so what's the temperature? It's plus 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's a good way to express the temperature. Now, the plus, some people say plus, but you don't have to say plus. Okay, you can just say, what's the temperature? It's 20 degrees Celsius. It means the same thing. Let's move down here, the next one. What's the temperature? It's 20 degrees centigrade. Centigrade, what is that? Well, Celsius and centigrade, these are the same temperatures, okay? Just centigrade is the old English style, okay? So, actually, I don't want you to say centigrade. I want you to only use Celsius. But I'm teaching you because you might hear centigrade. Some older people might say centigrade. Okay, so you hear centigrade, but you speak only Celsius. All right, let's move to the next one. Uh, what's the temperature? It's 20 degrees C. It's 20 degrees C. Okay, some people are going to shorten Celsius to just C. It's 20 degrees C. And actually, more common, we can shorten that more and cut that. And this is the most common way to express the temperature. What's the temperature? It's 20 degrees. Okay, so when people say it's 20 degrees, I know it's Celsius. And I know it's plus, okay? This one, uh, what's the temperature? It's 20 above, 20 above. Okay, so zero degrees and 20 above, 20 degrees above zero. So what's the temperature? It's 20 above. This, 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 they're all the same temperature, okay? Zero degrees, freezing, we're getting cold. Let's go down here. What's the temperature? It's 20 below. Okay, so this is above zero and this is below zero degrees. So zero going down cold, it's 20 below. Very cold. Let's move to the last one. What's the temperature? It's, this symbol is minus. This is plus. This is minus. Minus is very scary because it's freezing, it's cold. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius. If you told me that it's minus 20 degrees Celsius outside, I do not want to go outside. That's very cold. So what's the temperature? It's 20 degrees. What's the temperature? It's minus 20 degrees, okay? Those are the best ways to express it. All right, so I hope you understand how to express Celsius. Uh, let's look at a few more examples. All right, the first example. The temperature outside is 15 degrees Celsius. The temperature outside is 15 degrees Celsius. The next example. Water freezes at zero degrees C. Water freezes at zero degrees C. And the last example. 
It's cold outside. It's about three degrees below zero. It's cold outside. It's about three degrees below zero. All right, now we're going to talk about what they use in America, in the USA. They don't use Celsius, they use Fahrenheit, okay? So same question, what's the temperature? What's the temperature outside? It's 68 degrees, that's the same F. Instead of C, they're going to use an F. And that's 68 degrees. This is the spelling. Oh, it's very difficult to spell, even for me. Fahrenheit, okay? We pronounce that Fahrenheit. So 20 degrees Celsius is the same as 68 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And you should also know freezing, the freezing temperature, zero degrees Celsius is the same as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? So if you go to the USA and you're watching TV, all the weather, everything, they're always using Fahrenheit, and it can be very confusing. So I would say try to remember this so you can kind of guess how hot it is. All right, let's look at a few examples of Fahrenheit. The first example, a human's body temperature is usually 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. A human's body temperature is usually 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The second example. Room temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Room temperature is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last example. Water freezes at 32 degrees. Water freezes at 32 degrees. All right, so there you go. There's the Celsius system and the Fahrenheit system. Uh, they're very, very different and they can be very confusing. All right, so if you're going to the USA, you should try to uh, learn the Fahrenheit system. Anyway, I hope you understood what I was trying to teach you today. Uh, that's it. See you next time. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about Roman numerals. So Roman numerals are letters that mean numbers. Roman numerals are not so common, but you can see them every day. Okay, so especially on a clock or a watch, they often use Roman numerals. Uh, in, on book volumes and chapters of books, they use Roman numerals uh, a lot of the time. The Olympics usually express the year in Roman numerals. Okay, so you will see Roman numerals, so you should know at least the first ten. Okay, now let's take a look here. I wrote the first 10, and you can see the first one, I. Now, I is written like this, and this means 1. And the second one is I, I, 2. The third one, I, 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 3. So 1, 2, and 3, those are the very, the easiest ones, okay? After that, it gets a little more difficult. So 1, 2, 3, and the next one, is 4 and it looks like this IV now what is V well quickly let's go to 5 and you can see V is 5 all right V is 5 so let's go back V we know this is 5 and I so I is 1 so I is 1 before 5 and that's 4 okay so one one number before 5 is 4, and then 5. Let's go to the next side, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, if you notice, I, I wrote them a little bit different. And let's go down here first. Now, you can write the Roman numeral 
two styles. One style is with a line at the top and the bottom, and another style, there's no line, okay? This and this mean the same thing. So this is one, and this is one. You can see that again with five. So you can write it with the lines at the top and the V, or no lines, just V. Again, they mean the same thing. So this side, I wrote the lines, this side, I didn't write the lines. It doesn't matter. All right. So let's continue. This was four. This was five, six. Now six, V and I. So V we know is five. I we know is one. So five and one is six. So you notice I V, one before five, four. V I, six. V I I. 7, V, I, 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 8, so 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, and then it gets complicated again. I, X is 9, okay? So X, X is 10, okay? So like 4, 1 before 5 is 4. One number before 10 is 9, I, X. That means 9, and of course 10 is X. All right, let's move on to some bigger Roman numerals. Now I told you uh, X is 10. Now X and I, so 10 and 1, that's 11. X, I, I, that's 12. All right, so up until 12 are the most common Roman numerals because those are the ones on the clock, 1 to 12. So you should really know 1 to 12, okay? Now the next ones are not so common, okay? You, you rarely, rarely see them. But let's continue anyways. So after 12, we're going to jump to 20. And 20 is XX. So 10, 10. 10, 10 means 20. XXV. We know V is 5. XXV, 25. Okay, let's jump more. XX is 20, XXX, 30. And then the next one, XL. XL is 40. Well, what is L? L is 50. So X is 10. Again, 10 before 50. So 10 before 50 is 40. So this means 40. 10 before 50. L is 50, L-I, 50, 51, 51. X-C is 90. Well, what is C? C is 100. So X is 10 before 100. So 10 before 100 is 90. And of course, C, 100. Okay. So again, these ones are not so common, so you don't have to worry about this so much. But anyway, let's continue to some bigger Roman numerals. Okay, so here are some bigger Roman numerals. Now we know C is 100. Let's go to this one, CD. CD is 400. Well, what is D? D is 500. So CD means 100 before 500, so that is 400, 500, M, M is the last letter we use in Roman numerals, M is 1000, okay, M, D, well, D is 500, M is 1000, so 1500, M, D, and the last one here, really big number, M, D, C, C, C. Okay, so 1,000, 500, and 100, 200, 300. The total here is 1,800, okay? So that, that's Roman numerals. Uh, let's do a little more practice. Okay, let's do a little practice together. I know it's difficult. So let's take a look at these letters. LXV, what is that, LXV? Well, we know L is 50. Oh, but it's followed by X, so 50 
and x is 10. So 50 plus 10 is 60. And v, what is v? v is 5. So 50 plus 10 is 60 plus v is 5. So this is going to be 65. All right, the next one. X, X, I, X. Hmm. Well, we know X is 10. And X, X, 10, 10, 20. And 1, 21, X. Oh, this is confusing. Uh, first, we have to look at these. Okay, what is this number? I, X. Well, I, X is uh, 9. 1 before X is 9. So, X, X is 20 and 9. So 29. CV. Well, C, what's C? That's 100. And what's V? That's 5. So 100 plus 5. CV. 105. Next one. CCD. CCD. Well, C is 100. And CC, that's 200, and what was D? D was 500. So CCD, that's 200 before 500. 200 before 500, that must be 300. Uh, okay, but CCD, I tricked you. CCD is impossible. C 300 can only be CCC. All right. CCD, that is impossible. That is wrong. You can only write 300 as CCD or CCC. You cannot write it CCD. All right. The last one. MMXII. M. 1000. M. 1000. 2 M's. 2000. X. 10. II. 12. So this is going to be 2000. We know that. X, I, I, that's 12. Oops, put them together. That is a year 2012. It is written M, M, X, I, I. All right, so that's Roman numerals. Again, you only need to know probably uh, 1 to 12. Those are the most common. Uh, probably you'll never have to worry about these Roman numerals in your life, okay? But this is just for fun, so you know. All right, that's it. See you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to express your phone number, all right? So here's the question, what's your phone number? What's your phone number? Very important question. And the first number I wrote here is very big, okay? It has many parts. So let's look at the first part. The first part here is called your country code, okay? So the country code of Korea is 82. So if someone is calling from another country, they have to put your country code 82. Uh, in Canada and USA, the country code is 1. The next is the area code. Now in Korea, I don't think there's an area code 57, but there, the Seoul has an area code of 02 and I think Busan, the area code of Busan is 51. So if you're calling to a specific city, you should put the area code. All right. And then the number. So to express numbers, you just say the number. So this is 82572536112. Okay, very simple to express a number. Let's look at a, a mobile phone number. This is a 017. I don't want you to call real phone numbers. So this is just example phone numbers. So we would express 017. 017. Now if you remember zero, 
we can also express as O. So 017 or 017. Both are okay. And again, you have to be very careful with O because O sounds like 5 in Korean. All right, so if someone says O, don't write down 5, write down 0. Okay, so 017-3442-4666. Okay, that's the phone number. 017-3442-4666. Okay, now there's an easier way that a native speaker would express this number. If you look here, there are two fours, okay? So a native speaker, uh, well, they might say three, four, four, two. That's fine. But another way, three, and we would say double four because there's two fours. That's double. So three, double four, two. Okay, so that's another way to express that number. And if you look over here, uh, four, six, 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 that's fine to express the number that way. But if you see three sixes, that's triple. So you could say four, triple six. Okay, so what's your phone number? Zero one seven, three double four two, four triple six. Zero one seven, three double four two, four triple six. Okay, that's another way to express that number. Let's move on to the last one. The last one is a nightmare because it has five and O, many fives and O to get confused. Don't get confused. So this number 017-5050-0550, okay? 017-50. 50 oh, oh, All right, so if you don't want to be confused, you could say 017-50-50-0550. So again, you can say O oh or 0. All right, so that's how to express a phone number. Let's do a little test, a little listening test right now. I want you to listen to uh, some phone numbers. Okay, so there's four numbers here I'm going to ask you. The first one, listen carefully. 017 017-5634-7454. 017-5634-7454. Okay, it should look like this. Number two, 017 1657 4565. 017 1657 4565. Okay, it should look like this. Number three, 017 5005 0 Okay, it should look like this. And the last number 017 Zero one seven double two double three triple five one. Okay, that one was difficult. It should look like this. Okay, so that's how you express phone numbers. Okay, again, if you want to know someone's phone number, you just ask the question, what's your phone number? And if someone asks you for your phone number, you just answer, it's, and then you say the numbers. All right. So that's it for phone numbers. Uh, before I go, I'd like to tell you my phone number. So you can call me any time of the day or night 
to ask me English questions. So my phone number is 01047. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about numbers, uh, more specifically uh, things like apartment numbers, bus numbers, and flight numbers. Okay, we express these numbers differently in English. Let's take a look. So the first is apartment, your apartment number. So this could be your apartment number, or house number, or villa number bus number, taxi number, subway number, flight number. Okay, so these kinds of things we express the numbers differently. Let's take a look. The first one, okay, we, it's just two numbers. We always want to look at the last two numbers. So we would say apartment number 12. That one is easy. Apartment number 12. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so we want to look at the last two numbers. The last two numbers is 21, okay? So we would express this as 121, all right? So this could be apartment number 121. It could be bus number 121. It could be flight number 121. Now it's also possible to say 121, okay, bus number 121, that's okay, but you should learn just to say 121, okay, that's very fast and more common. The next one, okay, let's look at the last two numbers, 12, 12. So we would express apartment number 1212, 12. bus number 1212. 12. You can also say number 1212, but 1212 is more common. The next number, okay. The last two are 00, zero so we can't say 0. We're going to just say it all. We're going to say this as, uh, for example, bus number 1200, okay. Bus number 1200. The next one. The last two numbers, 56. So let's say flight number 456. Flight number 456. Again, you can also say flight number 456. That's okay. The next one, the last two, 67. So let's say bus number 4567. Bus number 4567. Or you could also say 4567. The next, the last two numbers are 07. So we could also say instead of 0, more commonly we're going to say 0, 07. So if I said apartment number 4007, 4007. Okay, and the last number, uh, Let's say bus number 52, bus number 1652, okay? Takes a lot of practice to learn how to uh, express these numbers. Let's take a little, a little quick test right now and see how you can do. All right, there's only four questions here. Number one, I live in apartment 632. I live in in apartment 632. Number two, we need to take bus number 3333. We need to take bus number 3333. Number three, my flight number is 1709. My flight number is 1709. And number four, the last one. Let's meet at the subway station number 465. Let's meet at the subway station number 465. 
Okay, I hope you did well on the small little test. Uh, again, it takes a lot of practice to be familiar saying these kind of numbers, all right? There's so many different ways to say these numbers. So I hope you learned uh, something in this video. Anyway, I'll see you next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how to express ratios in English. It's quite easy. Let's take a look. I have two examples here. The first example is about my party. I had a party. Uh, these are my guests, 100 guests. 75 of my guests were men, 25 of my guests were women. So what's the ratio? Well, here it is. So how would I express the ratio? Well, uh, the simple way is just to say 3 to 1. 3 to 1. The colon here, we always say 2. 3 to 1. But let's make a complete and full sentence. So I would say the ratio of men to women at my party was 3 to 1. The ratio of men to women at my party was 3 to 1. Alright, let's move on to the next example talking about buttons. I got three red buttons, two blue buttons, six black buttons. Okay, what's the ratio of buttons? Okay, we're going to use three numbers and simply you would say 3 to 2 to 6. That's the ratio of buttons. 3 to 2 to 6. Okay, easy. Let's take a look at a few more examples. All right, let's look at the first ratio example. The ratio of boys to girls in China is 110 to 100. The ratio of boys to girls in China is 110 to 100. The next example. There are two apples and three oranges. The ratio is 2 to 3. There are two apples and three oranges. The ratio is 2 to 3. And the last example. The ratio of children, teenagers, and adults is 7 to 3 to 1. The ratio of children, teenagers, and adults is 7 to 3 to 1. Okay, so I hope you have a better understanding of how to express ratios in English. Uh, before we end this video, I just want to talk about expressing scores, okay, in a game. So here is a soccer game between Korea and Japan, and Korea wins. They have two goals, and Japan only has one goal. So what's the score? You would just say the same. Two to one. Two to one. All right? That's easy. So that's how you would express a score. All right? So that's it for our ratios, and see you next video. Hello again. In this video, we are going to learn how to express decimal numbers in English. And it, I'll tell you, it's quite easy. Let's look. Now here is the decimal point. Don't call it period. Don't call it dot. It's a point. It's called the decimal point. So we would express this number as 1.1. .1. Easy. The next number. Okay, we could actually express this number two ways. 1.12, 1 1.12, or 1.12. Okay, the next number, 400.1, easy. The next number starts with a zero. Again, there's two ways to express this. You could say 0 
0.02. Or another common way, because it starts with a zero, we just start with the point. So some people say 0 0.02, okay? Now remember zero can also be called O, so you could say 0 0.02. The next number here, okay, we have more numbers. So 6.033 or 6.033, okay. Okay, let's move down to the last two numbers here. We have 10.1 and 10.9. Now 10.1 is very close to 10, okay. So if we change 10.1, just change it to only 10, that's called round down, okay? Round down. So the closer, 10.1 is very close to 10, so we take away the point 0.1 and just have 10, round down. 10.9 is close, very close to 11, so we change 10.9 to 11, that situation is called round up, okay? So changing 10.9 to 11, round up, 10.1 to 10, round down, all right? So I hope you understand how to use the decimal point and I hope you understand round up and round down. Let's take a look at a few examples. All right, the first example, there are 2.2 grams of fat in this food. There are 2.2 grams of fat in this food. The next example, I got 99.9 .9 out of 100 points on the test. I got 99.9 .9 out of 100 points on the test. And the last example. My brother is 150.5 centimeters tall. My brother is 150.5 centimeters tall. All right, I hope you have a better understanding of how to use the decimal point. Before we go, I'm going to talk about the other points that we might see in English. Now up here, uh, we have a point here, but we don't say point, okay? Here it's going to be dot, okay? We use dot for the internet, okay? So if you're using an email, it's dot com or www.gogoteacher.com. Dot com. Okay, so on the internet, we always say dot. So robin at gogoteacher.com. Now, here is a sentence, and we have another point. Okay, in the sentence, this is called a period. Okay, this is a dot. This is a period. Okay, so we call that a period. And looking at money, okay, we're going to study money in another video, but quickly, if we were reading this money, we wouldn't say uh, dot and we wouldn't say point. Actually, in money, we say one dollar and 21 cents. So in money, don't say 1.21 dollars. It's very strange. This is one dollar and 21 cents. All right, and also, you know, in Korean you say jom, jom, but in English this point is called a mole, okay? So you have dot, period, and mole. They all have different names. Uh, be careful, don't say the wrong name. All right, I hope this video helps you. See you next time. Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about how to express percentages in English. And I'm going to tell you it is very, very easy. So this is going to be a short video. 
Let's take a look. Okay, so here are some example numbers, and this is called the percent sign. Okay, so that's called the percent sign, and we read the first number as 1%. Okay, very easy, 1%. The next number, 100%. 100%. Let's put a decimal point there. So this is 1.1%. 1.1%. The next number, 101%. Okay. And then the last example, 62% of 12 is equal to 7.44. 62% of 12 is equal 7.44. All right, so that's how you express percent. Let's look at a few example sentences. All right, the first example, I got 65% on my test. I got 65% on my test. The next example, I lost 2% of my body fat. I lost 2% of my body fat. And the last example, I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Okay, so you saw some examples of how to use percent. I'm sure you're already a master on how to use percent. It's very easy. Uh, until next video, see you. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about expressing American money. Okay. So if you travel to America or other countries, uh, you need to know how to express American money or dollars or cents okay now let's take a look at the kinds of money they have they have of course coins and bills uh, first let's talk about the coins now they have four coins all right and this is how much the coins are worth so let's talk about how to express this in English first so how much is this and how much is this well this and this they're the same amount, okay? This is one cent, and this is also one cent, okay? That's the smallest amount of American money, one cent, all right? So their coin, they have a one cent coin, and the one cent coin is called a penny, okay? The one cent coin, a penny. Let's move on. This is five cents. Again, this and this, same amount of money, five cents. Five cents, five cents. They have a five cent coin. The five cent coin is called a nickel. A nickel. Okay. The next coin, this is ten cents. Again, ten cents, ten cents. We can write it both ways. They have a ten cent coin. It's called a dime. A dime. All right. And the last coin is twenty five cents. Twenty five cents, twenty five cents. And they call the 25 cent coin a quarter. A quarter. All right. Now, to get to one dollar, you need 100 cents. Okay, 100 cents makes one dollar. So if you have four quarters, you have one dollar. If you have 10 dimes, that's the same as a dollar. If you have 20 nickels, that's the same as a dollar. And how many, how many one cent pennies do you need? How many pennies? Well, you need 100 pennies to make a dollar, okay? Let's move on to the bills, okay? So they use uh, six main bills, okay? The $1 bill, the $5 bill, the $10 bill, the $20 bill, the $50 bill and the $100 bill. Again, the bills, that's the paper money, 
They have six main ones. All right. So that is the coins, that is the bills. Let's do some practice on how to express the money. Okay, so to express American money, let's look at these numbers first. Okay, we'll start off easy. Now, of course, this is $1, $1, and we should use dollar, $1. But let's move on to 10, $10. Ten dollars. You can hear this S now. Okay, you have to be very careful with the plural S. It's very important. So we have one dollar, but two dollars, three dollars, ten dollars. Okay, make sure you have the S. It's so important. All right, never say ten dollar. Okay, that sounds very strange and stupid. Okay, it's ten dollars. Ten dollars. Make sure you have that S. So ten dollars, one hundred dollars, one thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars, one million dollars. So one more time, one dollar, ten dollars, one hundred dollars, one thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars, one million dollars. Okay, let's move on to some more difficult use of American money. All right, so these examples are a little more difficult, but it helps us understand how to express American money. All right, let's look at the first number. Of course, this is six dollars, six dollars. And the second one is the same, okay? Don't be confused by this. This is six dollars, actually this means six dollars and there's no sense. So you could write six dollars like this or you could write six dollars like this. It means the same, all right? Let's move on. Now we have cents. Now it gets difficult. Listen carefully. So I'm going to read this number as six dollars and 31 cents. Okay, don't say point, don't say dot. We're going to use and. Six dollars and 31 cents. All right. Now there's another way to express this money. Uh, a quicker way. So as I said, six dollars and thirty-one cents. But the quicker way, uh, an American might say, just six thirty-one. How much is it? Six thirty-one. Okay. So you got to be careful. There's actually two ways: six dollars and thirty-one cents, or the quick way, six thirty-one. All right. Let's look at the next one. How much is it? Nine dollars and 99 cents. Nine dollars and 99 cents. And of course, the quick way, 9.99. 9.99. All right, let's move on. $22 and 50 cents. $22 and 50 cents. And the quick way, 22.50. 2250. All right, bigger number here. $117.32. $117.32. Or the quick way, $117.32. All right, and the last amount, very big number. There is no quick way for this number. All right, it's a lot of money. One million two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars and sixteen cents. One million two hundred and thirty thousand six hundred and eighty seven dollars and sixteen cents. Okay, that's how we express American money. 
let's see how you will do on the test. Okay, so we're gonna, do, we're gonna try a quick test. Take out a pen and paper, and I'm gonna say American money, and you should write down what you hear. All right, question number one, seven dollars. Seven dollars. Okay, it should look like this. Question two, one hundred and twenty dollars. One hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, it looks like this. Question three, seventy-five thousand dollars. Seventy-five thousand dollars. Okay, like this. Question four. One hundred and thirty-four thousand three hundred dollars. One hundred and thirty-four thousand three hundred dollars. Should look like this. Question five. One million nine hundred thousand dollars. One million nine hundred thousand dollars. Question six, 34 cents. 34 cents. Okay, looks like this. Question seven. $23.67. $23.67. Okay, looks like this. Question eight. Five hundred and forty seven dollars fifty cents. Five hundred and forty seven dollars fifty cents. Okay, like this. Question nine. Twelve thousand eight hundred dollars and thirty four cents. Twelve thousand eight hundred dollars and thirty four cents. Okay, it looks like this. Question 10, one million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred eleven dollars and eleven cents. One million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred eleven dollars and eleven cents. Wow, big number, very difficult. How did you do on the test? I hope you did well. I know it's difficult to listen to American money, but you must know it, okay? It's very important to hear the right amount of money. All right, we have this question again, okay? We did this with the Korean money and how to express it in Korean money. We're going to do it again, but we're going to express in American money, okay? So how much is it? And it's about what's the American money price? Same items, let's look at the pen. How much is a pen? Well, a pen is about a dollar, okay? So it's about a dollar. And the second one, soju again, I'm going to Family Mart, I buy the bottle of soju. How much is it? Well, it's about $1.25. It's about $1.25. Or, it's about 125. Okay, the Galaxy Note, yeah, very expensive mobile phone. How much is it? Well, it's about 800 to 900 dollars. Okay, it's about 800 or 900 dollars. The Kia Morning, the car. How much is it? Well, it's about 14 thousand dollars. It's about 14 thousand dollars. And the Kangnam apartment, how much is it? Okay, very expensive. The Kangnam apartment, maybe that's around a million dollars. Okay, very expensive, a lot of money. It's about a million dollars. All right, I hope you have a good understanding of American money and how to express it in English. Uh, be careful not to make a mistake with American money. Uh, you don't want to make anyone angry. All right, that's it for this video. See you next time.
Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about basic calendar expressions. Okay, so it's a very easy video. You probably already know a lot of these expressions. Of course, this is a calendar, okay, and we need to know the expressions about the calendar. So on the board I have the main ones here. So the first one of course is one day, and we instead of one day we could just say a, ah, a day. So on your calendar, that is just one day, a day. Next, we have seven days makes a week. Okay, so one week and of course a month. Okay, so a month, a little bit difficult to pronounce. A month, a month. Your tongue has to come out a little bit. A month, a month. So a day, a week, a month. And of course, the full calendar, 12 months, that is a year, okay? So a day, a week, a month, and a year. Those are the easy ones. Let's get on to bigger, bigger time. The next one here is a decade, okay? What is a decade? Well, a decade is 10 years, okay? 10 years is a decade. So you might buy a car every decade, okay, every 10 years. After a decade, we have a century. A century is 100 years, okay, and of course, we live in the 21st century. After the century, we have a millennium. Oh, very difficult to spell, a millennium. A millennium is 1,000 years, okay, very long time, 1,000 years we would call a millennium. Okay, after a millennium, we have something called an eon, okay, so notice we're starting with E, so we have to use an, an eon. How long is an eon? Well, there is no exact time of an eon. An eon just means a very, very long time, okay. So example, the dinosaurs, they, they lived on the planet eons ago, okay? So it just means a very, very long time. So this is not exact, okay? So probably, of course, the first four are the easiest and they're the most important. The decade, century, millennium, and eon, okay, you're not going to hear those too much, okay? Just I'm teaching them so you know but you should know the first four, okay? So let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, here are a few examples. The first one, there are 24 hours in a day. There are 24 hours in a day. Next example, there are seven days in a week. There are seven days in a week. The next example, there are about four weeks in a month. There are about four weeks in a month. Okay, the next one, there are 365 days in a year. There are 365 days in a year. All right, next one. There are 10 years in a decade. There are 10 years in a decade. And the next one. There are 100 years in a century. There are 100 years in a century. And the last one. There are 1,000 years in a millennium. There are 1,000 years in a millennium. Okay, so I hope you have a better understanding from the examples. So a day, a week, a month, a year. Those four are the most important for the calendar. And then the last, the last group here, not so common, a decade, a century. You should know millennium and of course an eon, an eon, very long time. It could be millions of years. All right, so I hope you understand. That's it for this video. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about 
the days of the week. Okay, now the days of the week, you must know, you must remember them. We're going to talk about the pronunciation, the spelling, and the short form. Okay, so let's get started. Here they are, of course, there's only seven days of the week to remember. The first one here, Monday. Okay, so listen carefully how I pronounce it. Monday. Monday. The next one. Tuesday, Tuesday, the next one. Okay, this one's a little difficult. Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay, what's the problem? Now, Wednesday has a D, but when we say Wednesday, uh, we don't say the D sound. We don't say wed nest day. Okay, it's Wednesday. So this is Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay. The next one, Thursday, Thursday, okay, it has a TH, your tongue has to come out, Thursday, 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 all right, next one, Friday, Friday, we have an F, your teeth should touch your lip, Friday, Friday, okay, Saturday, Saturday, and the last one, Sunday, Sunday, okay, let's do them again very quick, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, okay, but I hope you can do them really fast, okay, so like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Okay, you should practice until you can do it that way. All right, let's look at the spelling now. Now the spelling, okay, now they're very difficult to remember how to spell, but please know the correct way of how to spell. So the first one, Monday. Now the first letter is always big. It's always a capital letter, the big letter. You must always put the capital. So Monday... Tuesday, capital T, capital W, capital T, capital F, and these two have the capital S, the big S, okay? You always have to make that capital. And the spelling, yeah, as I said, a little bit difficult to remember, okay? You would have to do some self-study and remember how to spell. The short form, Monday, these are the official short form of the days of the week. Again, you need the capital letters and the period at the end. Okay, so M-O-N period, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thurs. Okay, this is not very short, okay, but you need that. That's considered the official short form. Friday, Saturday, Sun. All right, so that's the pronunciation, spelling, and short form. But before we move on, I want to talk about one more thing. These days of the week, Monday to Friday, those are called the weekdays. Okay, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Weekdays, okay, those are the working days. The weekdays. And of course, Saturday and Sunday, that's the weekend, okay? So weekdays, weekend. Remember that also, okay? Let's move on to a few examples. Okay, we're going to talk about three important questions talking about the day. And the questions are talking about today, tomorrow, and yesterday. So let's take a look at the questions, okay? Now, the first one is very important. What day is today? What day is today? Now, some people, they will say, which day is today? Uh, okay, that's a little strange. More common is using what. What day is today? So your answer, it's. Okay, your answer should always begin with it's. What day is today? It's Monday. Okay, now some people don't use it's. What day is today? Monday. Okay, that's okay. But better is using the it's. It's Monday. Okay, that's grammatically correct. That's a full sentence. It's Monday. 
All right. Let's look at the next one. What day is tomorrow? Okay. So tomorrow in the future. What day is tomorrow? Again, it's Tuesday. Okay. What day is tomorrow? It's Tuesday. Now, it is also possible because it's future, we can say what day will be tomorrow. It will be Tuesday. Okay. What day will be tomorrow? It will be Tuesday. But actually, that's okay, but this is more common. What day is tomorrow? It's easier. What day is tomorrow? It's Tuesday. All right. The last one here. What day was yesterday? Okay, yesterday in the past. What day was yesterday? Okay, we're using, we're changing the be verb is, is, to was, past tense. What day was yesterday? It was Sunday. It was Sunday. What day was yesterday? It was Sunday. Okay, so again, let's review. What day is today? It's Monday. What day is tomorrow? It's Tuesday. What day was yesterday? It was Sunday. Okay, this is the best way to ask and answer these questions. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're going to look at three more questions talking about how to express days of the week. Now, these questions are not talking about what day is today or tomorrow or yesterday. These questions are asking about uh, some event. Okay, something is going to happen on a day, okay? And when something is going to happen on a day, before we say the day, we should always use the preposition on, okay? We need that preposition on. So the first question, when is our date? When is our meeting? Okay, I have to meet you. When is our date? Okay, and you should answer with on on Friday. Okay, we are going to meet on Friday. You need that preposition. This is our event, our meeting, when? On Friday. Next question. Which days do we have English class? Okay, which days do we have English class? Now this is asking days. Which days do we have English class? Well, on Mondays. Okay, on Mondays. So the event is English class, when? On Mondays. And the last question, when is my homework due? When is my homework due? When do I need to give my homework? That's the event on Wednesday, okay? On Wednesday, okay? So when asking questions about what day is today, tomorrow and yesterday, you use it's. But when you're asking about some event, okay, something is going to happen on a day, you have to use the preposition on. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're at the end of the video, but before we go, I want to talk about some common spelling mistakes that my students do. Let's take a look. Okay, so here are some days of the week, but the spelling is wrong. And the first one is Thursday. Okay, a lot of my students write Thursday. I don't know what day Thursday is. Uh, I think they are confused between Tuesday and Thursday. And somehow they're mixing Tuesday and Thursday for Thursday. Okay, don't write Thursday. There is never a Thursday. Be careful. Next one, Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday has a D in the spelling. There's a D, but of course we don't say Wednesday. We say Wednesday. So lots of students spell it as they hear it. Okay, you got to be careful. There is a D. So this Wednesday, sorry, this is wrong. No, don't do this. The next one, Saturday. Looks good. Saturday, but be careful because this is a U, not an E. Saturday, so don't spell it with the E. The last two, Monday and Sunday. Monday, what's wrong? Well, the spelling is okay, but there's too much space here. Okay, 
a lot of my students separate the day. Tuesday, Wednesday, they put too much space, okay? It's one word, it should be very close. Be careful, not too much space. And the last one, Sunday, what's wrong? Well, as I told you, it always starts with a capital letter. So if you write it with a small s, that's wrong, okay? All right, so don't make these spelling mistakes. Uh, those are the days of the week. You have to remember all seven, the pronunciation and the spelling. Take some self-study, but I know you can do it. All right, that's it for this video. See you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about months of the year. Okay, I know the months of the year are very difficult to pronounce and spell. There's 12 of them, so also very difficult to remember. Okay, but in this video we are going to focus on pronunciation, spelling, and the short form of the month. So let's take a look at the first one, January. January. Okay, be sure to pronounce that correctly. January, January. And for the spelling, remember, we need a capital J, a big J. We always need this for each month, the capital letter. Okay, so January and the short form, Jan, with a period. This is called a period. So Jan, capital letter, period. The next month is probably the most difficult month for my students to pronounce and spell. Okay, they're always confused with this. Okay, now let's focus on the F. This is an F sound. F, f, f. Your teeth should touch your lip. F, f. And this is a B sound. B, B, B. Okay, so we should think of this as fa, fa, brew, brew. Airy. Fa brewery. Fa brewery. Fa brewery. Fa brewery. Fa brewery. Okay, it's very difficult. February. February. So it takes a lot of practice. Also the spelling. Okay, my, my students are often confused with the spelling and the R's. February. And the short form, F-E-B, period. The next four, a little bit easier, okay? March, March, April, April, May, May, and June, June, okay? And the short form, capital, remember the capital, M-A-R period, A-P-R period, May is special. There is no short form. May is just always May. So you should never have a period here. Never have the same May. Only May. June, J-U-N, period. Okay, so the first six, one more time. January, February, March, April, May, June. Okay, let's take a look at the last six months, starting with July, okay? So don't be confused with June, July. Again, capital letters here, J-U-L period. The next one, August, August. This is A, A-U is A, August, okay? And the short form, A-U-G period. September, 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 SEP period, October, 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 OCT period, November, 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 okay, this is a V, V, November, November. And the last month, December, December, okay? So let's go through the last six again. July, July, August, August, September, 
September, October, October, November, November, December, December. That's all the 12 months, okay? So let's move on. Okay, we're at the end of the video, but before I go, I want to talk about some mistakes again. Uh, please be careful with your spelling. Let's take a look at these three. These three are very common. As you can see, no, don't spell these words like this. Now, the first one we can guess this month is February, but the students are confused with the V and the B. They're writing February. Also, they're missing a U. Okay, so th there's lots of mistakes with spelling February. Be careful. Don't do this. The next one is April. April, but they're writing a V. I don't know why they're writing a V, but they're writing a V. This should be a P. So don't, don't write Averil. April. And the last one, I can understand the mistake. December, December. Okay, I understand because this is actually a C. It makes an S sound, December, but you got to be careful. You need the C, December, all right? So anyway, with the S, don't write like that, okay? So you got to be very careful with the spelling of the months, all right? So that's the months of the year. I hope you understand. Uh, there's 12 of them. I know it takes a lot of practice to pronounce and to spell, but you need to do a lot of self-study to master them, okay? I want you to be perfect with them. Okay, that's it for this video. See you next time. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to express the year in English. Okay, it's a little bit difficult, but I know after this video you will understand and you will be able to do it very well. Let's take a look. So on the board I wrote some years, okay? So you just have to listen and follow me. The first year up here is the year I was born. Yes, I'm quite old. So how would we express this year in English? We're going to look at the first part, 19, and the last part, 75. So we're going to divide that into 1975. 1975. Never, 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 never say 1,975. No. The way to express this year, 1975. Let's look at the next one. This is 1975. This is 1999. Okay. 1975, 1999. The next one. Okay. This is a little different because uh, there's three zeros. So for this year, we only say 2000. Okay. There's one way to say it, 2000. The next one. Okay. Now, the next one, there's actually two ways to express it in English. One way is 2001. Another way is 2001. Okay. 2001 or 2001. Okay. Remember, zeros we can call O. 2001. The next one, 2012 or 2012. Again, there's two ways. 2012, 2012. Next one, similar. 2013, 2013. And the last one in the future, 2020 or 2020. Okay, so from here, going all the 2000s, there's two ways to express it. So sometimes that's confusing. So let's go through the list again. 1975, 1999, 2000, 2001, or 2001, 2012, or 2012, 2013, 2013, 
2020 or 2020. All right, so that's how we express years in English. Let's do some more practice. Okay, so let's take a look at a few questions so we can understand how to use year in a sentence. Question one here, what year is it now? What year is it now? Because it's now, we want to start our sentence with it's. What year is it now? It's 2012 or 2012. Okay, what year is it now? It's 2012. Again, you, you should use it's, but of course it's okay just to say the year, but I prefer a full sentence. It's 2012. Let's look at the next question. What year were you born? What year were you born? Again, you came out of your mother as a baby. What year were you born? Okay, with the years, you want to use the preposition in. Okay, now with days, we use the preposition on. With months, we use the preposition in. And with years, we must use the preposition in. So what year were you born? In 1975, okay, that's the year I was born, in 1975. The last question, very important to Korea. When is the Pyeongchang Olympics? Okay, coming soon. When is the Pyeongchang Olympics? In, okay, again, in is our preposition. In 2018 or in 2018. All right, so those are a few examples of how to use it in a sentence. Uh, I hope you understand these examples. Using years uh, is very, very easy, okay? They're easy to express. Just remember to use the preposition in, okay? That's it for years, and I'll see you next video. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to express the date in English. And that can be very difficult because you have to know your months, you have to know your ordinal numbers, you have to know how to express your years. So this is a very advanced video, but it's a good video to learn. Uh, so I'm going to start with this question. What's the date today? Now, don't confuse this question with what's the day today, because the day is only asking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on. This question is what's the date, okay? So we, it's very different than day. So there's two styles here of how to express the date. One style is British style, and one style is American style, or Canadian style. We use this. Okay, so what's the date today? And it's the same date. They put the 14th, March 2013. Okay, so how, how would they express that? What's the date today? It's the 14th of March 2013 or 2013. Okay, short form, 14-3-13. Now, they use uh, day, month, year. Okay, but I know in Korea, you use the opposite, year, month, day. But the British style is opposite. All right, now here is the American style and the style I want to show you because I'm Canadian. I use this also. What's the date today? March 14th, 14th, 2013. March 14th, 2013. 3, 14... 13. That's how we do express it. Short style. Okay. Now, both ways are okay. Doesn't matter. But this is how you would express a date. Put your month, capital letter. Put your ordinal number. This is 14th, a comma, and the year. Okay. And you would read it as March 14th, 2013. All right. So that's how you express the date. Let's do some more practice. Okay, here are some examples to help us understand how to express the dates. First, let's look at this question. When is payday? Now, payday is a very important day 
That's when you get your money from your job. When is payday? So I'm going to begin my answer with it's. It is. It's. When is payday? Okay, and you can see when I'm expressing the date, I'm always going to use the preposition on. The preposition on. Okay, so when is payday? It's on Monday. That's very simple. It's on the 16th. Okay, it's on the 16th of this month. Now, if you're just going to focus on the date here, 16th, we always need a the, the 16th. All right, the next one, we're going to combine these. We're going to put these two together. When is payday? It's on Monday, the 16th. Okay, so we have on Monday, that's okay. On the 16th, that's okay. On Monday, the 16th, that's okay too. Okay, all of them are okay, but this one, uh, there's no confusion. This is very detailed. All right, let's look at the last two. Now, when is payday? It's on June 16th. Okay, you want to focus on the month sometimes. It's on June 16th. And let's put all of these together. When is payday? It's on Monday, June 16th. Okay. If you want to be very detailed and make sure there's no confusion, you're going to say the, the day, the month, and the date here. Okay, when is payday? It's on Monday, June 16th. Okay, so there are many ways to express the same thing. Okay, it depends on the situation, but you have to be familiar with all these ways because which one is the best way? Well, there is no best way here. Uh, it depends on the person. Everyone's going to say it a little bit different. All right, let's move on to some questions. The first question here, when were you born? Okay, when were you born? Again, you came out of your mother as a baby. When were you born? This is a very detailed answer. Okay, so this is when I was born on March 20th, 1975. Okay, so I'm going to put the capital on March 20th, comma, 1975. That's how I would write and say that date. Let's move on to the next question. When is your birthday? Okay, they're very similar questions. When were you born? When is your birthday? Okay, so when is your birthday? Doesn't care really about the year. It's more about the month and the date. Okay, so when is your birthday? On March 20th. On March 20th. That's the date of my birthday. Next one. When is Valentine's Day? A very good and happy day. When is Valentine's Day? On February 14th. On February 14th. The last question. When will you go to Spain? When will you go to Spain? You're asking your friend. When will you go to Spain? And maybe she answers very quickly. Oh, on the 19th. On the 19th. All right. So I hope you have a better understanding of how to express the date in English. It takes a lot of self-study and practice, but I know you can, you can understand if you really, really try. That's it for this video. See you next time. Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the seasons. Okay, it's very easy because there's only four seasons, all right, and you probably already know them. Here they are, and the first one is spring. Spring, and spring is when the flowers come out, okay? The next season, summer. Summer. Summer is hot. Summer is a good time to go to the beach. Summer is my favorite season. I like hot weather. All right, the next season, autumn. Autumn. Okay, this has an aw. Autumn. Autumn. So instead of autumn, an easier way is just to say fall. You can say autumn or fall. Both are okay. They mean the same thing. So, of course, in autumn, the leaves on the trees fall. And the last season, winter. 
Okay, winter. Winter, of course, is very cold and you build snowmen in winter. Uh, I don't like winter very much. Okay, so those are the four seasons. Let's do some extra practice. Okay, for our practice, I have three quick questions. Let's look at the first question. What season is now? What season is right now? Okay, because it's now, we have to begin with it's. Okay, it is. It's summer. Okay, I made this video now. For me, it's summer. Okay, when you're watching this video, maybe it's another season. All right, what season is now? It's summer. Remember, right now, we always use it's. Okay, the next question, when is Halloween? Okay, so what season is Halloween? Well, we have to use the preposition in. Okay, when is Halloween? In in autumn. Okay, in autumn or in fall. Okay, so remember with the seasons we need the preposition in. When is Halloween? In autumn. In fall. And the last question. When is Christmas? Okay, what season? Of course, in winter. When is Christmas? It's in winter. Okay, so that's the seasons. Remember, when we're talking about now, we need it's. We're talking about the season now. And other seasons, we need the preposition in. Okay, that's seasons. I hope you understand. See you next time. Hello everyone, welcome to this time expressions video. In this video, we are going to talk about how to express the time of day. Okay, it's very simple. And you would talk about the time of day to express uh, your routine, what you do in the different times of day. Let's take a look at the board. I have a question. When do you? And let's make a question. When do you wake up? Okay. When do you wake up? And you want to express the time of day. Very easy. In the morning. When do you wake up? In the morning. Make sure you have the. Don't say in morning. In the morning. When do you wake up? In the morning. When do you take a shower? In the morning. When do you go to work? In the morning. Okay. Uh, let's look at the next one. In the afternoon, when do you take a nap? Okay, you take a quick sleep. When do you take a nap? In the afternoon. Okay, I like to take a nap. In the afternoon. When do you go home? After work. When do you go home? In the evening. When do you eat dinner? In the evening. When do you watch TV? In the evening. Okay. So these are very easy ways to express the different types, the different times of day. Make sure you have in the. All right, let's look at the next ones. Uh, they're using at. Okay, so this first one is using at night. In the evening, at night. Very similar, but in the evening is usually talking about early evening. Okay around 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, that's the evening time, relaxing time. At night is probably after 10 p.m. You know, you're going into 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., very late time. Okay, that's usually when we say at night. All right, so when do you, well, if I said when do you go home from work, and you said in the evening, okay, I know it's early, but if you said, if I asked when do you go home from work, and you said at night, I would think, oh, very late, maybe after 10 p.m. All right, you have to be very careful walking on the street at night. All right, the next two are very exact times, okay, at noon, at midnight. Noon is only 12 p.m. That is noon. So when do you have lunch? You can say at noon. All right. 
midnight is only 12 a.m. Okay, very late. When do you go to bed at midnight? Okay, very, very late. Only, only 12 p.m., only 12 a.m. They're very exact times. All right, so these are different ways to express the times of day. Let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, let's look at these examples. The first one, I exercise in the morning. I exercise in the morning. The next one, my lunchtime is at noon. My lunchtime is at noon. The next one, I like to go swimming in the afternoon. I like to go swimming in the afternoon. And the next one, I eat dinner in the evening. I eat dinner in the evening. And the next one, I eat lamyon at midnight. I eat lamyon at midnight. And the last example, be careful walking alone at night. Be careful walking alone at night. Okay, I hope you understand how to express the different times of day in English. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question now. When do you study English? Okay, what time of day do you study English? When do you study English? Uh, I, I suggest the best time to study English is in the morning. Okay. Uh, in the afternoon is not so good. A lot of my students are always very tired in the afternoon. In the evening is okay, but never, never at night. That's too late, all right? So I hope you understand these time expressions. See you next video. Hello everyone, welcome to this time expressions video. In this video, we are going to talk about how to use a go, later, next, and last. Okay, these are very useful expressions to use when talking about time. But first, let's review our vocabulary. And this is the vocabulary we need to know for this video. Uh, second, and I have one second. Okay, one second. We could also, instead of one second, we could say, a second. So one and a mean the same, just one second. Okay, one minute, a minute. Okay, how many seconds in one minute? Well, 60 seconds in one minute. And the next is hour. Now, hour is special because we're going to use an. Okay, because hour starts with a vowel sound. Okay, an hour. Okay, we always use on with hour. And of course, there's 60 minutes in one hour, on hour. Next is a day, a day, one day. Of course, how many hours in a day? 24 hours. A week, how many days in a week? Seven days in a week, one week, one month, a month. Okay, and the last one, one year a year. Okay, so that's the vocabulary. I hope you understand. Uh, before we move on, I'm going to change this. Okay, this is one. Well, now let's put, let's put two. Now everything changes. Two second? No, we have to plural it. Two seconds. Two minute, two minutes. Two hour? No, two hours. Two day, two days, two week, two weeks, two months, two years, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years. So if you're using two, three, four, every number except one, okay? Make sure you use the plural. All right, let's move on. Okay, now we know the vocabulary. Let's get into the first two expressions, ago and later. Very easy to use. Ago is talking about the past. 
before and later is talking about the future after okay so I have a question here when did you call me okay when did you call me okay this is talking about the past so someone asks when did you call me okay why you just put the vocabulary here one second ago okay that's very soon that's too soon when did you call me one second ago that's too soon one minute ago that's possible one hour ago one day ago one week ago one month ago one year ago you can use any of these here okay so remember if you said five for example five when did you call me five minutes ago five minutes ago okay remember we have this s because it's now five five minutes ago all right so we're going to use a go because it's a past question when did you call me five minutes ago when did you come home one hour ago all right let's change the question let's change it here to the future when will you call me okay in the future when will you call me let's talk uh, let's use the future expression uh, one second later well that's too soon second is very short time okay when will you call me one minute later one hour later one day later one week later one month later one year later very long time okay and also remember if we're gonna use a plural five six seven eight we need the s when will you call me five hours later all right so ago and later very useful expressions to use for talking about the past and the future let's move on to the next two expressions okay so we're going to look at these two last and next also very useful time expressions now i changed the question a little bit okay so past tense when did you get married and for the future when will you get married let's take a look when did you get married last second no okay we can't use second with this expression next second no last minute no we can't use minute and actually we can't use hour and we can't use day we can only use these expression okay so for these ones you want to use uh, a go and later only now these ones you can use a go and later and last and next okay so again you can't use these with last and next so let's take a look when did you get married last week last month last year very easy when will you get married next week next month next year okay that's how you use last and next very easy let's take a look at some examples all right let's look at some example sentences listen carefully two weeks ago I met a girl two weeks ago I met a girl last week we went on a date last week we went on a date ten minutes ago I asked her to marry me. Ten minutes ago, I asked her to marry me. Two hours later, we will go home. Two hours later, we will go home. Next week, we will meet her parents. Next week, we will meet her parents. Two months later, we will get married. Two months later, we will get married. Okay, I hope you have a good understanding of how to use the time expressions ago and later and last and next. They're very useful to quickly express time, all right? So you should study those, self-study. I know you can learn them. I know you can use them. So uh, I hope this video helped you. See you next time.
Hello everyone, welcome to this time expressions video. In this video, we're going to talk about time expressions for the past, present, and future. Now, in the previous video, the before video, we already studied ago, later, uh, last, and next. Those ones are common. And here are a few more, okay? Now, there's a lot of time expressions, and I can't teach them all, but I tried to choose the most common. All right, so let's take a look. The first is the past, things that happened before. And the first one, very common, last night. Very easy to use. Last night I ate pizza. Last night I drank a beer. Last night I went to bed early. All right, so very easy to use to talk about yesterday night. Now the next three in the past, a long time ago and long ago okay these are things that happened before but a very long time has passed so for example in the past Korea had a war okay so that was long ago a long time ago was the Chosun dynasty okay long ago was the Chosun dynasty all of these are good expressions to talk about something long ago. Okay, let's move on to the present. Now, right now. Right now I'm teaching in this video. Also, we could use this one, as we speak. As we speak means the same as now. As we speak, I am teaching this video. Nowadays, these days, recently, all of these mean the same thing. So something has happened around this time. Now be careful with nowadays. Nowadays is one word. A lot of my students say nowadays. Nowadays is wrong. Don't say nowadays. You have to say now. There's an A there. Nowadays. Nowadays. These days. Recently. So nowadays the weather is very hot or these days the economy is bad. All right. So all of them, very similar. All right, let's go to the future. Soon. A lot of my students like to say, coming soon, coming soon. Now, we usually use coming soon for movies that are coming soon. But just when we're talking with our friends, uh, we don't usually say coming soon. We say soon. My friend is coming soon. That's okay. But I'm getting married soon. Or I'm going to eat dinner soon, okay? I'm going to use it like that. Don't use coming soon too much. Tonight, tonight, I'm going to have a good dinner. Tonight, I'm going to go to bed early. Tomorrow night, okay? Tomorrow night, I have to meet my friends. Tomorrow night, I'm going to exercise, all right? And the last two, in the future, far in the future all right so we're talking about a long time so in the future i don't know when in the future i will get married far in the future far in the future maybe 20 years later i will retire i will quit my job all right so i'm sorry i had to go a little bit quick through these expressions these are good time expressions to express the past present and future Let's take a look at a few examples right now. Okay, I wrote three sentences here to help you understand how to use the time expressions past, present, and future. Let's take a look at the first one, in the past, okay? We should try and always use our time expression at the beginning of the sentence. So in the past, that's my time expression. After our time expression, we should use a comma. In the past, comma. So, in the past, Korea was poor. In the past, Korea was poor. All right? The economy was not good. Let's look at the next sentence. Nowadays, comma. So, nowadays, these days, recently. Korea is developing. Okay, nowadays Korea is developing. 
Again, I have a comma. And let's go to the future. In the future, Korea will be rich. In the future, Korea will be, in, will be rich. In the future, far in the future, soon, maybe soon. Soon, Korea will be rich, okay? So again, use the time expressions in the beginning, followed by a comma there, okay? So let's look at some more examples. Example one. Last night, I had a job interview. Today, I got a phone call. I was hired. Tonight, I will celebrate at a good restaurant. Okay, example number two. In the past, children were very polite. Nowadays, children are rude. In the future, I hope children are polite again. Right, next example. Recently, I have been sick. As we speak, my stomach hurts. Soon, I may need to go to the hospital. All right, the last example. A long time ago, I got married. These days, I have two teenage boys. Far in the future, I will have grandchildren. Okay, so those were some good examples of how to use the time expressions of past, present, and future. Now, as I taught you, you should try and use the time expressions at the beginning of the sentence, but in some cases, it is okay to use them at the end. All right, that's, that's not a bad thing. Anyway, I hope you understand. I know there's a lot to learn in this video. I hope to see you again soon. Hello everyone, welcome to this time expressions video. In this video, we are going to talk about indefinite adverbs of frequency. Okay, what are indefinite adverbs of frequency? Well, indefinite means the time is not exact, not detailed, and adverbs of frequency are words that describe how often we do something, okay? So to help you understand, let's look at the list of adverbs of frequency. These are the most common. All right, so how often you do something. Let's go through the list. Of course, the top one is always. That means you always do something. Almost always, very close. Frequently, okay, you do it a lot. Usually, often. Sometimes, okay, sometimes is the middle. So sometimes you do something, sometimes you don't. Occasionally, occasionally, seldom, rarely, okay, you don't do something very much. Almost never. And the last one, never. You never do something. Okay, so let's look at our question. This is the important question we want to answer. How often? How often do you? So, how often do you do something? So, let's make an example question. How often do you drink water? Okay, how often do you drink water? So, someone asks you that question. How often do you drink water? Okay, so first you should think about which one of these describes how often you drink water. So, there's actually three ways to answer this question. Now, I'm going to choose always. So, the first way to answer how often do you drink water, I would say always. Okay, very simple. You just say the adverb of frequency. How often do you drink water? Always. Okay, that's the easiest way. The second way, how often do you drink water? Okay, you would use a complete sentence, a full sentence. I always drink water. How often do you drink water? I always drink water. All right. And the last way, which is probably the most common way, is this one here. How often do you drink water? I always do. Okay. I always do. This is a good sentence to use. All right. Let's change the question. 
how often do you drink soju? Okay, how often do you drink soju? Uh, some of you are always, some of you are never. I'm going to choose sometimes. So I'm going to say, I sometimes do. How often do you drink soju? I sometimes do. All right. Now the adverbs of frequency are usually in the middle of the sentence. Okay. But you see these ones here with the star. These ones are in the middle, but also we could use them at the beginning of the sentence. So how often do you drink soju? Sometimes I do. I sometimes do. Both ways are okay. All right. So these are the adverbs of frequency. I know it takes a lot of practice to remember them and use them properly. So we're going to look at a few more examples right now to help you understand them. Okay, let's look at some example sentences. The first one. Occasionally I play tennis. Occasionally I play tennis. I frequently swim at the beach. I frequently swim at the beach. Sometimes I go fishing. Sometimes I go fishing. I always have a headache. I always have a headache. My wife usually comes home late. My wife usually comes home late. She almost never studies. She almost never studies. We hardly ever hold hands. We hardly ever hold hands. They often fight. They often fight. All right, so those were some good examples of how to use indefinite adverbs of frequency. Now, they're very useful to know, so you should study them. Now, I couldn't talk about everything in this video. So you need some extra self-study, learn them, use them. They're very useful to express how often you do something. All right, so that's it for this video. See you next video. Hello everyone. Welcome to this time expression video. In this video, we are going to learn how to use definite adverbs of frequency. What does that mean? Well, definite means an exact time, an exact amount. And the adverbs of frequency, okay, those are words to describe how often we do something. All right, so let's take a look. This is the question we want to answer. So someone asks, how often do you do something? So let's do an example. I will ask, how often do you take a shower. How often do you take a shower? Okay, so we have to answer. Now let's start with once. Once means one time, but we don't say one time. We use the word once. So how often do you take a shower? Once, and then I would choose one of these. Okay, once a minute. Okay, that's a lot of showers. Once an hour. That's still a lot of showers. Once a day. That sounds right. How often do you take a shower? Once a day. All right. Now, some of you, maybe you take a shower two times, but we don't say two times. We say twice. Okay. So we use once, twice. How often do you take a shower? Twice a day. Okay. And if you're a very dirty person, maybe twice a week, twice a month, or once a year, that's a very dirty person. Okay, so we have once, twice. Uh, I'll change the question. How often do you brush your teeth? How often do you brush your teeth? Well, I brush my teeth. Let's see. Once a day? No, no. Twice. No, I'll say three times. 
Okay, so we say once, twice, three times. I brush my teeth three times a day. Three times a day. Uh, how often do you eat food? Hmm, I eat food three times, four times, many times. Okay, I eat a lot of food. I eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some snacks. So many times a day. All right. Okay, so that's, we're using a day a lot. Let's use one of these. How often do you go to school? Okay, so if I ask the question, how often do you go to school? Well, three times, uh, if you go to school, maybe five times a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you would say five times a week, okay? How often do you take a trip, okay? How often do you take a trip? Well, maybe you would say once a year, once a year, maybe twice a year, okay? Uh, maybe never, okay? Don't forget, never is also a choice. All right, so this is how we use the definite adverbs of frequency. Let's move on to some more. Okay, we're going to look at the expression every. Every is very common, very easy to use because you can say every morning, every afternoon, every evening, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year. So, let's make a new question. How often do you exercise? How often do you exercise? Well, some of you maybe every morning or every evening, every day, all right? Uh, how often do you check your phone for new messages? Okay, so how often do you check your phone for new messages? Some of you might say every minute, every minute I check my phone or every hour. How often do you visit your grandparents, okay? Maybe your grandparents live very far. How often do you visit your grandparents? Well, every year, okay? So that's similar to once a year, every year, all right? So that's every, very easy to use, very common. So let's look at some more examples right now. The first example, I visit my parents once a month. I visit my parents once a month. The next example, five times a week I go jogging. Five times a week I go jogging. The next example, every minute I check my mirror. Every minute I check my mirror. Every evening I watch TV. Every evening I watch TV. And the last example. I like to meet my friends once a week. I like to meet my friends once a week. Okay, we just saw some great examples of how to use definite adverbs of frequency. They're very good to know especially when someone is asking you a how often question, all right, you have to answer with an adverb of frequency. So you need to do a little more self-study. I couldn't talk about everything in this video, so please uh, do a little more self-study and learn them very well. I know you can master them. That's it for this video. See you next time.